Hey, greetings from the year 3000. It still sucks. This is Phil J. Fry, and you're listening to The Drunken Turkey Show. You're one stop for this sort of thing. Hit that button, like, and subscribe. You know what to do, just like every other podcast. Just like every other podcast. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to The Drunk Turkey Show. I'm Daniel. Big Blue, my man. How you doing? What's going on, man? You know what to do. Hit that like and subscribe. Doing good. Doing good. Yeah, you, Big Blue said it. You got to do it. So you doing? How was your weekend, my man? You doing anything special? No, I just worked. A busy weekend, man. Just doing this, and I'm at school or I'm at my work. So one of those things. Dang, you're a hard working man. Hard working man. Well, today we got a uh, new case that we're going to be talking about. A uh, missing persons case out of Tennessee. We have Sebastian Rogers. He went missing about a month ago. Apparently. Just kind of vanished throughout the middle of the night, according to the parents, or according to mom and and stepdad. This is him. He's 15 years old and believed to believe he's on the uh, spectrum. He's autistic, and we just kind of go through who who else is is here. So this is Seth Rogers. This is this is father, and here are the Proudfoots. Right. So these are the uh, mom and step stepdad. I believe it's what. And these guys here have been under a lot of speculation as to whether or not uh, they had something to do with this case. Apparently, she states that them two were on the phone. She told her son to, you know, it was time to go to bed. He went to bed. Uh, she's added to the story. And I think that's one of the reasons why so many people are skeptical about, about her. And basically stated that she had heard a noise now, you know, at 10 o'clock. And she said something to the effect like, hey, did you fall out of bed? He said no. And she said, well, whatever you're doing, go to sleep. So that's been something that has been added. Uh, she, they have not been seen during any of the searches. And some of the statements that they've made have appeared to be suspicious to some. Now, me and you, Blue, we we are fresh into this, fresh eyes, right? Yeah. So, and let's, let's get some of the info in. I got a little bit in. Let's get some more to see what, what everybody's talking about. Yeah, let's pull it up. So Nancy Grace interviewed the, uh, the, the parents here, Chris and Katie. So I'm aware of some of the interviews that have been out, and I'm aware of some of the statements. I think she had said something to the effect that when she woke him up, he wasn't there. And that was one of the statements that came out in one of her earlier yeah, interviews that people have kind of looked at. To me, I think that that don't spark a red flag for me. It sounds more like to me, just somebody uh, talking out of emotion. Almost a lot of what they said in that first interview, I didn't find very suspicious as everybody else did going through it. You know, when I was in law enforcement, there were several times where I'd go to a house and, you know, somebody passed, you know, from natural causes or old age. And you have no idea how many times I've heard the the statement you know he woke up dead those things can be said sometimes and and it kind of sounded like one of those things in this situation but blue what are your thoughts on on that aspect before we go into this this interview itself yeah i mean they, they can stumble with their words the same way i do and we put the suffix and the prefix backwards you know maybe she missed a couple of words and she probably meant to say i went to wake him up and he wasn't there no nah, yeah i woke him up and he wasn't there right but. That's true, man. I mean, we also have to understand the emotional roller coaster that these guys are probably going through. But that's assuming they had nothing to do with this case, right? Um, at this point, I haven't seen anything that points uh, to their involvement. But let's listen to what they say here, and maybe, maybe we'll, that might change my mind. And his stepfather, who were in their home with Sebastian when he goes missing, to both of the Proudfoots. Thank you for being with us. I want to go straight back to when Sebastian goes missing. Ms. Proudfoot, I understand that the day before, which would have been Sunday, if I've got the information correct, that you guys went uh, out, you went to dinner, you went to somewhere, I believe you said BJ's, where he had a, quote, colossal popcorn. Then you yes, came home that night, and around 9 p.m., you tell Sebastian to go to bed. He says, okay, he goes to his room. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That night, I understand from previous statements you've made that you went to bed around midnight. Is that correct? It is. And to you, Mr. Proudfoot, Chris Proudfoot, did you also go to bed at midnight or before or after? No, we went around. We went to bed around the same time because we were on the phone together. And um, please excuse, please excuse any of my questions. I'm simply trying to find out more about that night. Did you two sleep in the same bedroom? He wasn't actually in the home at all that weekend. Ah, you were not home. No, okay. Me. So where were you, Mr. Proudfoot? I was uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. How far away is that? Um, three hours and 37 minutes from doorstep to doorstep. And what were you doing in Memphis? I'm currently working or was working at the St. Jude Children's Hospital uh, construction project. Yes, I'm very familiar with St. Jude's. You said you were working there. Are you no longer working there? All right. So this guy says he was not there the entire weekend. From what I understand, they've cooperated with law enforcement and turned over their phones. If they can cooperate that he wasn't there that weekend, his whereabouts were in Memphis that night. And Memphis is a bigger city, right? 
Yeah. It's not it's not a small city. So I would assume if, you know, it's also the St. Jude's building. So I'm assuming that's somewhere in the populated area. You know, I'm not sure where his RV could be, but, you know, if there's some sort of surveillance that has him that night and he never left that area until after the disappearance. I mean, as much as some of the things he may have said or may have lied about or whatever the case may have been, you know, how could he have been in two places at one time? Now, could yeah. he be covering up for the wife? Maybe. Uh, it's what, a possibility. What do you think, Lou? I mean, if, if he was at work or you know, out there the entire weekend. And, and trust me, there's there's multiple ways to verify that, you know, surveillance, um, you have street cameras, you have, you know, uh, business cameras, things of that nature in those vicinities. All right. right. Especially in construction sites. Um, most big construction sites either have to sign in nowadays or there's cameras, you know, seeing who's going in and out because people try to steal all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So if he was at work, I'm pretty sure there'd be some side of, some sort of evidence of him being there, especially if he gave his phone up and if he had the GPS on and everything, mm -hmm. you know, it would, it, it would show where he was at. Yeah, I think that if he had some sort of involvement and he was claiming to have been somewhere and he was not there and they were able to, you know, police were able to confirm uh, or find out that he lied about a certain situation. I mean, there'd be well, one. He could be arrested for, for, you know, perjury and lying. Now, I know a lot of people are saying he lied here and lied there on YouTube channels and stuff. Uh, there's nothing saying he can't do that as sketchy as that is. Um, but to police, he can't. Right. If he if he lies to a police officer, that's a false report. So I'm sure and certain that. If they suspected him in that certain area, that I think they would have acted upon that. Now, I believe the T TBI and local law enforcement have said that they have cooperated. I don't know if they've come out and said that they've cleared them, but they've said that they don't. They haven't found any sign of foul play. What does that tell you, Boo? No, I mean, no, no signs of a breaking, no signs of a struggle, uh, you know, probably no signs of a cleanup. You know, that's what I get from no foul play. Because if it was like a cleanup, they'd be like, okay, why is the clean chemicals on, on the floor, you know? Or... Well, I'm not sure if they checked for that or not, but I do know that Seth Rogers, the Sebastian's father, he, he said that he went over and he went in and he said it was clean, but he didn't make it seem like it was overly clean, like it was spotless or any of those type of things. And he hasn't come out forward, at least to my knowledge, to accuse them of something yet. And forgive me if I'm wrong on that, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we only have part of the information. Uh, so we're getting some information at the same time as y'all are. So Right. Uh, and maybe. as far as like why he's lying and, and why do this, I think he's trying to make himself look better in a certain angle f to the public. I mean, they have been scrutinized since the beginning. I think that's a big part of why they haven't been out there on the searches. I know if I was in charge of the search, I would tell them I didn't want them there. You know, they've had death threats. They've had, you know, people harassing them. They've had letters and uh, mail and people comment. I mean, have you seen the comments about what they say to these folks? If I was in charge of a search, hell no, I wouldn't want them there. I'd have to babysit them, make sure nobody hurt them. Yeah, that's a possibility of having that many threats. Exactly. Which is like, you know, he has to go to work. Apparently they left and people are saying that that's suspicious because they left. Yeah, You know, he, he has to work. I don't, I, I feel that given the th death threats and things that they have, w would you feel comfortable leaving your significant other at home if you, you were getting death threats and she was getting death threats? Not if the, you know, everybody knows where you live. It's, it's too unsafe sometimes. There's too many people that you don't know how they're going to act. There, there's, like I said, there's a lot of crazy people out there. Mm -hmm. Everybody acts different. Some people go way past, way past go when they play Monopoly. Yep. And I mean, I've, like I said, I was in law enforcement. I've had to go and assist with finding uh, children on the spectrum who have wandered off or, or walked off. It's it's more common than you would think. Have you ever had that experience, Blue, where uh, in your medical field experience with autistic individuals? Yeah. yeah. Um, see, sometimes autistic, they can get far, but then they, they, they get lost and they normally turn themselves into somebody or somebody sees them doing something that's way off and be like, hey, what's wrong with this person? Mm -hmm. You know, because they have a routine or they have a little bubble they stay in. And, but there is some people that can, depending on how severe the autism is, can live a normal life and do everything like everybody else can. So no, for sure. Easy. For sure. And um, from all, uh, you know, all indications was he's a very high, uh, high functioning autistic person. You know, my, my nephew and my oldest daughter are both um, autistic. So uh, one more, uh, in my opinion, um, probably more on the spectrum than the other. You know, both of them are, are high functioning. And I kind of understand a little bit, you know what I mean? And I know that they said that he doesn't wander off or he, he doesn't have a history of wandering off. But I've seen so many cases where somebody who wandered off for the first time, you know, was at 15, 16, 20, 18. You know, those things happen. Now, I'm not saying that's the case in this situation. I don't know yet. I'm still looking at this. <laughs> this is uh, we're looking at the information that's there. Apparently, there was a video of two flashlights or something like that um, that ended up being not two flashlights. Yeah, everybody was kind of jumping to conclusions there. Well, 
Lou, do you have um, what do you what else do you have to say before we continue? Have anything else? Uh, there's a couple questions in there, but uh, pertaining to this part, so yeah. I, I start on. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, I mean, he, he's he's he was what 15, right? Oh, he and is. He's 15, uh, but like that's that's around the time where the testosterone is high. Uh, you know, hormones are still happening regardless of you know if he's autistic or not. He's going to be going through the same type of you know hormonal puberty type of stuff. You know, so that could also play a role as to you know why or how or if he, he went out on his own, you know what I mean? I mean, I, one thing is if there was more information out there uh, that I saw in, in this interview was because uh, they were hoping for some, maybe some of the neighbors had camera footage and their ring cameras and stuff like that. Maybe, but I haven't heard anything else break, no breaking news about any camera footage. No, nah, they, they, apparently they don't have him on any surveillance in the neighborhood, but there's no, there's no lights in the neighborhood. Apparently the only thing's missing is all well, the clothes that he was wearing and a, keychain flashlight you know a lot of people are saying you know this person wouldn't do this or this person wouldn't do that uh, i didn't know these people you know y'all knew these people personally <laughs> you know I, I understand you may know somebody who is a certain way and, and but everybody's different you know what i mean everybody's different my my daughter is 100 different than my nephew you know and they're both on the spectrum so um everybody's different I just, I mean, could you imagine if these individuals had nothing to do with it and, and people are blaming them in the manner that they are? Yeah, I mean, it's it would suck as a parent because you're getting blamed for being the cause of your child being missing. Mm -hmm. There's two time and time again, we've been proven wrong that uh, it is one of the parents that did something. Yeah, it, 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 so. it could very just well be. Me. Go ahead, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. No, no, it's okay. I was going to click on that one. So it's been since February 26th. It's, we're, we're getting uh, almost to a month tomorrow. Remember, February only had 29 days. So. All, right, all right, let's continue this because there's a lot of questions that would be answered here in a moment. Right now, that's up in the air. Well, you've been gone ever since Sebastian went missing. So I understand. When you are home, do you two sleep in the same bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Is this a three bedroom home? Yes, ma'am. Uh, where is your room as it relates to Sebastian's room? It's on the opposite end of the house. Um, the master bedrooms on one side and the other two bedrooms are on the other side of the house. Okay. So your master bedroom is on one side of the house and Sebastian's room is on the other side of the house. Is that correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Now you have a third bedroom that I believe you keep for your other daughter. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Is that Faith? Is your other daughter named Faith? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So where is Faith's bedroom as it relates to Sebastian's bedroom? Uh, it's on, it's in the back. Back side of the house, Sebastian's bedroom. So and it's, the front side of the house. Okay. So his bedroom is away from Faith's bedroom and away from your master bedroom. Is that correct? Is Sebastian's room on a top floor or a fl uh, floor, le a ground level? We have a ranch style house. It's a one and a half story. So everything's half or flat. And then you have the bonus from above the garage. Okay. So his is on ground floor, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That morning, was there any sign of a break in through a window, a front door, a back door, a sliding glass door, anything at all? No, ma'am. Okay. No sign of forced entry. Was anything taken from the home at all? Not that we could find anything. We couldn't find anything missing. I want to circle back to Sebastian's shoes regarding if anything was missing. Do you have a burglar alarm? No, ma'am. Do you have... Why do you think they hesitated, Blue? Um, only because I know a little bit uh, more of the video, but they don't... Re what I, I didn't finish the whole video, but I saw that they have semi a high-tech entry doorway keypad mm -hmm. uh, to get into the houses. And most of the time, you don't need a to be connected to an alarm system. Sometimes they are, but I know I've had one of my garages not connected to any any uh, alarm system. It's just electric. Type right. in the number and don't need a key. No, the, the, the reason why she hesitated is because that's telling the world that they're not protected. And um, that's one of the reasons why she's not there. I mean, they're getting the threats. They're getting you know, everything under the sun. I mean, it's horrible. I, I know me and you are probably going to get a bunch of the crap too in the, in the comment section just because we don't see what everybody has seen here. I mean, in the first interview that they had, they were kind of saying that, you know, go and look, you know, maybe perhaps somebody did take it. Maybe perhaps something like this happened. That's not usually indication of uh, somebody that is involved. They usually kind of put a barrier there or deflect like, you know, um, he had to have wandered off or something of that nature. You know, the fact that, you know, they want more to be done and I get they're not out there in the public. But again, I think that's probably more law enforcement doing because if I was in charge of this. And I know that some folks say, oh, it doesn't matter what a cop would tell me. And you can say that until until an officer's there and there's some handcuffs involved. If you interfere, interfere with an investigation or, or something like that and, and or cause a scene, that, that can be an issue. You know, they're looking for one person who could possibly be injured or hurt. And yeah, they don't need to add to that situation and have to babysit these guys because there are tons of people who are out to, to get to them. So again, I'm not saying that they're innocent. I have no idea. 
I'm barely looking at this. I just haven't seen anything from the two interviews that I've seen. I kind of indicate that, you know, something nefarious. I know that he had something with CPS on his other child. Comes out here and says it's not on his, on, on Sebastian. Law enforcement don't really appear to be looking into him anymore or at all. You know, he, he volunteered to do a polygraph and they said because of his whereabouts that he didn't need to. Kind of tells me that they've confirmed where he was at. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, they they said we don't need it because we um we know where you were. Yeah. Then then he might be cleared. Like I said, it to me it does seem that maybe he was working in another city and it and the, and the police did at least clear him because of all the speculation. But also um they would have investigated him anyways. Yeah, as I say, as I say, policing one on one always investigate the home first. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they do it secretly, but they still investigate home first and then they go out and they start searching. Who was this kid contacting? Was he playing video games? Was he chatting with people online? And then they go down the list until they, you know. Yeah. And like I said, he didn't take a polygraph. She apparently did and passed. Yeah. Like I said, I have to listen to more of it. At first, she did seem a little suspicious just because part of the stories that I've heard online. About what? Well, that uh, there might be some involvement. Uh, the You know, the, the way she had said that she woke him up. And then the way she had added that he fell, like uh, it'll be in the report. When, you know, like, talking to Nancy that she told him to go to bed. You know, I'm not a uh, body language guy. You, know, you have to go to school to do something like that, right? To determine what they're saying, their feelings, their thoughts, what people are saying. There's a channel I can't think of it for the life of me. They're pretty big. You guys probably have seen it where they break down body language. One's an actor, one's had something to do with law enforcement. There's four individuals. And when they broke down that interview, they kind of saw the same thing that I was looking at as well, where I saw somebody grieving, uh, somebody with raw emotion. Maybe I shouldn't say word grieving, but somebody who's uh, clearly impacted emotionally by what is going on. And I didn't see any attempt to uh, like deceive or, or any of those things. I, I saw somebody who was, like I said, um, you know, those emotions seemed real to me. I've talked to parents who have had missing children, and you know, I don't think I've ever talked to one that did something to their child. I'm trying to think back, I don't think I did, but you know, I've talked to others who have, you know, their child has ran away or or um, took off with somebody they didn't know. You know, that's the other thing. Everybody thinks that they know their their kid real, real well. I hate to break it to you, probably far from the truth. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's tough work trying to keep up to everything. Mm -hmm. You really got to be a detective at home. Yeah. I mean, it could be straight A student. It could be, you know, the most kindest person. But you look through their phones and computers and you'll find something sometimes. Sometimes you won't. But, you know, sometimes you will. Right. No, yeah, man. I mean, you have no, no idea how many times I heard a parent say, my kid wouldn't do this. Almost 90% of the time, you know. And then, or, you know, their kid runs away. And, uh, you know, I would ask, um, you know, who are their friends in school? And they would know one or two. And then come to find out, I'd be like, do you know who this person is once we find the people that, you know, where their kid was? No, I don't know who that is or that is. And, you know, they, they only knew a fraction of the people that they were friends with, especially now that there's phones in, in today's age. Man, technology is making things so easy to hide. And unfortunately, I mean, shoot, and go back to when you were, you know, a teenager. Did you outsmart your parents? Was it because they weren't you know, in with the times or aware of what was going on during that moment? Because maybe what you were doing. Wasn't what they were doing when they were younger? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Just, I mean, I, you know, if you're good, you cover your tracks. And March says here, Sebastian was a big Minecraft player. Minecraft is a pedophile magnet. It could very well be. I mean, she said that that he had Minecraft and that yeah, he had on Nintendo Switch. I don't think she knows, but you can connect to the internet with those. Isn't that correct, Lou? Yeah, we can chat on the Switch and on Minecraft. And he had a phone. Now, she said that it was locked up and all this other stuff. You know, I did the same thing with my daughter's phone, too. She's also autistic. And she got through everything. <laughs> she was younger, too, than 15 when she was. She was like 13 when I had her phone. And she. The Roblox is. Yeah, Ro Roblox is more. But yeah. where there is a version of Minecraft where you can chat with people. That's why they go when they do have Minecraft. They have the school one. So you can't chat. Believe says Chris said dog gave him scratches. You know, the thing is, like, if he says he, he was at work and police have investigated that and they can verify that he was out there and there's no evidence that he left where there should be evidence of him leaving, such as, like I mentioned earlier, Memphis being a larger city, there should be some sort of surveillance, cameras, footage, things of that nature. And especially when you're working around, you know, I'm assuming, well, he said St. Jude, so I'm, I'm assuming that's in a populated area, probably a lot of cameras around that area. And, you know, if he's taking his RV, I'm not sure where he's staying at with his RV, but if it's anywhere close to that area, I mean, it'd be very easy to determine what time he arrived, 
things of that nature. And if he had his phone with him, which apparently he did because he was on the phone with his wife till midnight. I mean, you can kind of track down where he was. And if he yeah. wasn't there throughout the night and he wasn't there throughout the weekend, I mean, if he has some scratches on him, it doesn't necessarily mean that he got him from, you know, going back home and doing something nefarious. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. he literally could have gotten a scratch from a dog. In fact, I got a bruise on my knee right now. Um, <laughs> I've been working on my car like crazy. So I got bruises and scratches all up on the side of me. You know, something happened. God forbid. Shoot. I'm saying that right now. Bruises on my legs. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, he, he said did, did he say he got it from a dog? That's what somebody said. I have no idea. I haven't heard that. I'm just saying that if if he did, you know, whatever, you know, if they have proof that he was in Memphis during that entire weekend, I mean, outside of assisting his wife, you know, I mean, how could he have gotten the scratches if, if that's true? You know, I don't I don't I don't see that avenue or that dot connecting. The only dot that could connect if they have proof he was in Memphis is that he assisted his wife. To me, if he was out there and police can verify that he was out there, I, I'm off of him personally being the one that did it. I, I, I mean, that's it's impossible to be there and at that house at the same time. You can't be in two places at once. Yeah. I mean, like like they said, um, in most cases, one does it. The other one, because of the, they love the other person, they become accomplice because they help hide it. But, you know, we don't have all the evidence yet. We, we're just go, um, listening and seeing what's going on. Yeah, true. And I want to answer this one. He said, he, how can a dog scratch you on both arms at the exact same place? My dog does that quite a bit. My dog will jump up and with both paws go like that. Now, what I don't know is... I've ever seen a person getting attacked and scratch a perpetrator in the same spot on both arms. That doesn't sound, um, that doesn't jive. You know, typically it's, there's a lot of like desperation all over the place, right? You know, it's not synchronized. A dog coming up to play jumps up and puts its hands, paws forward and, and kind of paws downward, which I have my, my oldest dog, Capone does that. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't see it nefarious. I, I think I would find it more nefarious if he had multiple scratches in multiple places, m- multiple directions and things of that nature. And then at that point, I'd say, hey, you know what? That makes more sense. But yeah. having scratches in the same place on the same arm like that, uh, that means that tells me dog. What do you think, Blue? Yeah, I, say, I probably got one on my, on my, on my belly because my dog jumped on me earlier when I went to, to um, feed it and get, give it some water because she likes being outside during the day. Mm-hmm. And she's got it's, it's a big shepherd with some big claws. Uh, I tried to take her to get cut the other day, and they told me she likes scratching stuff. Right? Like, yeah, she's always scratching at the fence or digging. Yeah, like they're 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 sharp, but they're not long. So okay, yeah, save me twenty bucks because I'm not trying to cut that dog's nails because it, it tried to bite me last time I tried to. <laughs> no, I hear you, dude. But you know, as far as like you know him being a bigger guy, like well, how big was the dog or whatever? I think I seen that in the live chat. Um, when when Capone scratches me in both arms, he's not jumping at me like like this. It's when I'm going down to pet him or something, he gets all excited, or I'm putting his food down, and he'll come up and. And do his thing. So, like I said, he, he if he wasn't there on weekend, and police can verify that to the point that they don't want his lie detector test. Now, I'm taking his word for it that, that that's the case. I don't think police have come forward and said that that wasn't the case. You know, and she took hers, according to her. I'm sure police can verify that. You know, if those things did occur, I just kind of feel bad if these guys uh, actually didn't have anything to do with it. And there's so many people that are pointing blame. I don't know. Let's watch this. The, the, the other thing is, uh, they went out to dinner to eat at BJ, so there was probably video of that too. Oh yeah, in fact, uh, JLR went out there and verified that they were there at BJ's. Let's see, was it just mom and son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so there's another shed, uh, sheet of evidence. Yeah, dad, stepdad went there. Apparently, he was in Memphis working on the. I mean, there, those things are very easy to prove. You know what I mean? It, it comes to a certain point where you know uh, I think that you know there are certain people that are are disclosed in this, right? Yes, yeah. Dad, you have st- uh, stepdad and mom and and Sebastian and and really nobody else. So folks can end up like getting tunnel vision on the uh, on the individuals that are, are available. Think back like in the Brian Koberger case, everybody was f- focusing hyper in on on Showalter or somebody else, and end up being somebody we'd never even most of us hadn't heard about. You know what I mean? And you know, in this situation, I'm not saying that this is that, that he was taken or anything like that, but yeah. you know, if he was, you know, the question would be why, right? You know, let's go down that. Why would somebody take? I mean, there's there's a few things that I would look at is if he um, was chatting with somebody and there's a lot there's of one. pedophiles out there that like picking up kids off gaming and he was a gamer. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other reason is maybe he I, I would say I would look at the footage at the restaurant, see how him and mom interacted. If it was arguing, you know, or he just 
had a upset posture, see what led up to that. You know what I mean? You have to look yeah. at the history. Yeah. Uh, and then go from there or see if he had friends and maybe he just got angry, upset, and just wanted to uh, show mom something like, hey, I don't need y'all kind of deal. And he took off. Well, uh, it's almost a month and it's pretty bad. That's what he did for a month. But kids do it all the time. Yeah. And that's the crazy part because you don't know which one it is. There was this guy. Uh, he was recently found. He, he it was something similar. Um, Spectrum. He, he went walking. They found him years later, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't remember. Yeah. Well, no, no. This guy was up in the. See, this is multiple people that this has happened to. Uh, this one was actually up north, up northern, I believe, because there was like a snowstorm coming, and they found him, and they were able to identify him, and come to find out he was like a missing persons from like five years earlier, and something very similar. Walked out the front door and had the two of you taken a polygraph. I have. I have not. So apparently he told some people that he had taken a lie detector test. What does that tell you, Blue, that he's coming forward here now saying he hadn't? And uh, the stories keep changing. That's what that's why everybody keeps uh, pointing at them because something's changing every few days. Yeah. But this is two weeks ago, right? Or the initial, no, this is no, no, this, this is this is the recent one. The yeah. one I watched was two weeks ago. I watched one video before I jumped on today. Yeah. Uh, well, a few videos, but the one I saw was them being interviewed by the news reporters mm -hmm. two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. That's the one where I'm saying, like, you know, I understand some of the words that they're saying may be off a little bit, but as a person who has spoken to parents who, of missing children, of children who ran, uh, of children who have been um, taken from a custodial parent and things of that nature, and, and it didn't seem off to me. You know, it didn't. I didn't get any red flags from it, to be honest with you, um, in anything. You know, everything seemed like um, these were people that were, you know, that have lost their kid and, and also kind of going through the ringer when it comes to the media and perhaps social media out there. And uh, like I said, I don't know much about this. I'm still going through it. Um, my my mind is still open. I haven't seen anything that says that this guy was involved. Like if there was, I don't know, a toll receipt or something that he went back from Memphis or if there was a you know camera that caught picture or wind of him or if his phone turned off for like six hours or something like that, that'd be pretty suspicious. Yeah, it would be pretty suspicious. I mean, hopefully, you know, we'll get more information soon. Yeah. Um, and then we'll got to get back to the actual task is where is this missing boy? Right, right. Five marriages is a red flag. I don't know about that. And that's what um, Michelle says here in the, in, in the live chat. I mean, if he wasn't there, though, and he can prove he was in Memphis, how does outside of him protecting the wife that the wife had something to do with it? How do you connect any of those dots? I mean, he, he could have had a lot of things, anything on his background. If you can prove he wasn't there, people can't be in the two places at once. You know what I mean? I mean, even if you have some sort of background, like apparently um, like the CPS thing he says he has, which was a product of a divorce. And you know how many divorced individuals I've actually seen something like that happen a lot all the time. And and I know some people are saying, you know, why would they open up a case for something like small or this or that? And I've seen a CPS case open up because a uh, kid went tardy to school. So, I mean, he went tardy a few times, but, you know, because he was tardy and the school was not getting their money, they reported it. And then there was an investigation into it. You know, I've seen, you know, when somebody runs away, both parents be a CPS gets involved. Why did the kid run away? Why did this happen? You know, those type of things. So to me, you know, the protective order story stuff, too, he is going through a divorce. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. But apparently he's claiming he, she had one. He had one on her as well. And this, I'll be honest. Those all sound very, very much like uh, yeah. an ugly divorce. That's what it sounds like. And so, like I said, I'm not saying he, he's he's innocent of anything or he did anything either. I, I don't know. But if he can prove he wasn't there and he can prove he wasn't there all weekend. I mean, that's the other thing, too. He was he was working all weekend. I'm fairly positive that's that's, that's going to be very easy to prove whether or not he was there or not. When you yeah, give, I mean, I'm oh, sorry, I was gonna say, when you're working, you got to punch in and out, you got to see somebody. I mean, that's how alibis work. You know, it'd be one thing if he said he was driving around all night by himself with his phone off. That's not the case. Would you be willing to? I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph, and I was told directly by law enforcement because of my whereabouts, I did not need one. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say, why wouldn't you test him anyways if he's willing to? I mean, resources, cost, things of that nature. And especially, like they said, if they can prove where he was at, why why would they have to test him now? He could be lying. You know, I, I don't know that, but I'm fairly positive law enforcement do. And, you know, if he if if he chose not to, I'm pretty sure they'd be looking at him pretty closely. What do you think? Blue? Yeah, I mean, they would they would sometimes, you know, it's uh, 
I would say it's like a double-edged sword, you know. They can say that in the beginning of the case that they're not interested, and then they go right back to them if nothing ever shows up because of all this controversy that's happening. So I want to say we'll have to wait to get more information. On the job, I mean, I don't know anything that they fired him if he ever went back, but if you work construction, you're expected to be there. If you don't show up for a few days, the job has to get done. They'll drop you in a heartbeat because there's somebody else that's willing to get that that job done so maybe he stayed home like i said but they hadn't gone on any other searches but maybe he stayed home to comfort his wife and they fired him and that can't happen if he's a she rocker he ain't gonna put itself up jill says he's lying he had said in a previous interview that he had taken a polygraph and passed All right and I, and I understand that but if he can prove he wasn't there that weekend and there's evidence that shows he's not there that weekend how can he be in two places at one time you know I, to me i think that that wasn't an interview to, you know, who, who was that to also? I think that was to a YouTuber. That wasn't to mainstream media or, or to law enforcement or any of that stuff. You know, I think he was probably just trying to kind of get the heat off of him. What do you think, Blue? Yeah, I mean, he, he could have. He could have, he, he could have been saying that just to, to try to push all the backlash, negative uh, reactions that they already have against them. Mm-hmm. But it's just going to create more. So in those yeah, situations, that's all it did. it's better for them just to be honest. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. You know, or not go on at all. I mean, but then again, they want to bring attention and this is their way of, of bringing attention to to the case and putting you know their son out there. You know, they get crucified for not being out there on the searches, but they've gone on several platforms to talk about their son, to get the word out there and and even ask answer questions of that that pertains to scrutinizing them as persons, parents and, and as individuals. Uh, we learned before uh, bad publicity is still publicity. <laughs> that's true you know that is true it, it still puts her name out there puts his name out there his photo out there so that people keep looking for him mm-hmm. so i mean Ooh, the narrative wrong would be the, the best situation right and like i said he's they, they've cooperated with law enforcement you know they i haven't seen any of the red flag stuff you know they left they came out and told the public where they not necessarily where they're going but why they left they're not hiding i mean i wouldn't have came out on a you know an interview here if, if you're trying to hide you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you probably can, but you'd just be not releasing your location. You know, be discreet. Yeah, Can- Canadian True Crime Boss says Daniel Chris is only referred to Sebastian as the boy. I mean, in certain places, especially in the South, that's not uncommon, to be honest with you. You know, I, I've had several friends who that was their actual nickname, the boy. That's what we called him. And that wasn't their name. <laughs> you know, this is it weird? I guess. But again, I, I fall back to how does him calling him, you know, Sebastian the boy and him being in Memphis that weekend connect dots or connect together? You know what I'm saying? And uh, the other thing I would look at is see if, they, if he called the police where he called from. Well, we, what, yeah, they, what time they did he show up? Because if they called the police first, the police would have been there before he showed up on his drive in. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. Apparently, he got the call at I can't remember what time, but apparently he was on the he was at work at the time. So it was while he was at work. So could have been early. You know, crane operators uh, and construction companies, they start right, you know, as soon as the sun comes up. Comes up yeah, or sooner. Yeah. Depending if you got inspectors coming at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning and you got to tidy it up, you got to be there at seven, make sure it's tidy. Yeah. I, mean, I used to do construction, man. And I was there, especially since we were the service techs and the preppers for, the, for our crews. Uh, you know, I was there by six in the morning, six thirty, because we had to get their trucks prepped before they even took off. And then and sometimes we had to go do, uh, you know, panel checks and panel installations before the inspector got there at 10 or noon. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on what kind of job duties he has. Yeah, that's true. Well, he's the high crane op- uh, operator. So he was the guy that goes way up there in the crane. Uh, Michelle Renee it says three-way police, three-way call to the police. So she called him first, right? And she's freaking out. She's like, I can't find him. I don't know what to do. You know, she's probably thinking the last thing is he was abducted or he wandered off far enough that we're not going to find him. But she's panicking because she can't find him. He says, call police. You know, she's panicking. He's calling police. If, if you were in that situation, wouldn't you want to be on the phone call too, Blue, if your child was missing and, and you and your spouse were separated? Yeah, I mean, I would I would like to, to be there to see what they're going to do. And these, then uh, for the next thing is getting the car and drive. <laughs> yeah. And well, I, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But, you know, it, it, I think that this is my, my speculation or assumption here that, you know, I would want to be on that call. I know my spouse would want to be on that call. We want to know, you know, what to do where to expect what's going to happen, you know, who's coming, who's going, where do we go? What do we, you know, in some of those situations, people panic. And when people panic, either they, they 
sometimes they freeze. Sometimes they don't do anything. Sometimes they do the wrong thing. Sometimes they do the right thing. You know, it's, it's all it's all different. And and like I said, and, and Captain says, look at the difference between Riley Strange's parents. But were Riley Strange's parents ever accused of having something to do with anything? You know what I'm saying? These folks coming out and speaking to the public could be their way of of getting the word out. Because, you know, um, a missing child never goes this big 90% of the time. It never has Nancy Crease knocking at the door. You know how many interviews she'd be doing a day if she went for every missing child interview? Mm-hmm. No, she's going for this one because of the publicity that there's out there. Gillian says, personally, my first call would have been to the bio dad who is deputy sheriff. I mean, <laughs> my, my first thought would have been, why, why are you with somebody else? Stay with the bio dad. Like, mm-hmm. you're, you're married to somebody. I, I'm fairly positive your ex-husband is not the first person that comes to mind when a situation occurs, you know, you're going to go to the, the person you're most closest to, the person you trust, the, your, your, your support system. You're going to go to your husband, not to your ex-husband. I mean, that doesn't even make any sense to me. Maybe they're saying that because he's a sheriff and he'd get his crew on it. But, you know, they called police right away, too, after he told she told him. So, yeah. And he, they called him and he showed up. And apparently he called the he called directly to the sheriff. To, to get the ball going, get it going quicker because they live out in the county. You know, all the stuff that they're saying makes sense to me. I'm not seeing where the suspicion is yet. You know, maybe it's there, you know, um, we just haven't seen it yet. Let's continue this. I didn't know that either. They're also threatening the bio dad. Oh, really? Hmm. I had no idea. I haven't seen anything about any threatening the bio dad yet. But, you know, when uh, the media and, and and sometimes I've seen it where people just, you know, they got, they got to blame somebody and They'll blame one, 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 and then blame the next, and the next, and the next, and then when they find somebody, so they can't blame. Uh, I'm, I'm normally get blamed, so I'm always the bad guy, like I like to say. Right, let's, let's do this. I understand, Miss Prophet. Did you pass your polygraph? I did. Those questions out of the way. Ah, uh, was Faith in the home when Sebastian went missing? No, no ma'am. Does anyone else have a key to your home beside your immediate family? No. No, ma'am. That night, Miss Proudfoot, at midnight when you went to bed, what did you do until midnight? Um, I had been reading a chapter that I needed to, and I had been talking to my husband on the phone. Um, I was falling asleep on him, so that's when he told me it was around midnight. He told me to go ahead and put the dogs up and go to bed, and uh, that's what I did. I got up, put the dogs um, where they sleep, and then I myself went to bed. Where do they sleep? I'm going to answer that later, but uh, Faith is the stepdaughter. Yeah, his daughter. They have a big pin. A pin? Is it inside or outside? Uh, that reminds me of another question. Do you guys have a motion sensor light or lights on the outside of your house? Yes, we do have lights on the outside of our house. Did they activate that night? They're not motion sensor. We uh, have lights. Were they on that night? No, okay. Ma'am. Were they on that night? So the lights were out mm-hmm. the whole night? Yes, ma'am. We don't typically turn the flood lights on. Were there any lights outside the house on at all? Just my little um, solar lights that we have in the garden. There's yep. two lights on the side of the house above the garage that are on at all times. Oh, yeah, those are on. Oh, there's a light above the garage that's on at all times? There's two, yes, ma'am. Okay, so those lights were on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I, the reason I'm asking is because I heard you say earlier, Mr. Proudfoot, that your neighbors have been very, very forthcoming uh-huh. with their ring camera info. And I was yes, trying ma'am. to determine if any lights were on, what, if anything, they may have caught. But I understand from your previous interviews that nothing of any evidentiary value was caught. And also, in another statement you gave, I understand that the video of the two flashlights, and I'm saying that with air quotes, that's not exactly what that was at all. We now don't believe that two flashlights were observed around your home. Is that correct? Yes. You're very correct. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, just to answer a couple of things real quick. Um, somebody said, he told me to put the dogs up and go to sleep. Super submissive. Mm, I don't think so. I mean, I was listening to another uh, interview about that specific phone conversation and he said that she was falling asleep on the phone that he could tell that she was falling asleep and he said hey just just put the dogs up and you know go to sleep already i don't i don't see that as being controlling what about you blue no i mean that's i don't know i don't have um i probably would have said good night but i don't have a lot of indoor dogs like i said my dog loves to stay outside so right. i never had to tell anybody to put the dogs up put the dogs up only when it's raining to get the dog in or it's too hot you know get her in yeah. and leave her in the ac and but other than that, she loves staying out there. She's crying, whining just to get the door open, just to get out there. No, no, I get that, man. This might be anecdotal because I have several dogs. I forget to put them up all the time. My wife gets mad at me. And, you know, there'll be times where I wake up. And um, and the reason why we have to is because sometimes when my daughter wakes up, we have an infant. Um, when she wakes up in the middle of the night, my my wife will go to the couch and my dogs like to be on the couch sometimes. And so I have to put them up before I go to bed, because if I don't, you know, she'll have to deal with the baby and the dogs and, and everything else in the middle of the night. She tells me that sometimes like, Hey, don't forget to put the dogs up. Cause I have literally forgotten to put the dogs up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, that's maybe, maybe it's because of that. And it's completely you know, innocent to me. It doesn't seem like something that is controlling in my opinion. 
Yeah, and the other thing was this question. Like, I told Daniel, oh, man, Nancy's like, she's doing it again. Like, she grills people, and that's what she's known for, and that's what she's doing. Mm-hmm. I like she, it, dude. She interrogates people like, you know, she's the head police officer. Yeah, no, I, and I actually, I actually like this because, you know, she's a, attacking a lot of the rumors that are out there and asking them point blank for answers. And so, you know, I like the approach from Nancy Grace, and I like the, uh, you know, the line of questioning that she's had so far. All right, let's continue this. Regarding your vehicles, uh, Ms. Prophet, what make and model do you drive? I drive a um, Infinity SUV. Year? 2017. And, sir, what do you drive? I drive a uh, diesel truck, Chevrolet. Year? Yeah, I don't remember. I thought, man, I think it's a 2021, I think. So, your Infinity SUV was parked in the garage or outside the garage that night, Ms. Prophet? In the garage. In the garage. And, Mr. Prophet, your vehicle was on location in Memphis. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so there's only one car at the home. Is that right? There was actually a, a work vehicle in the driveway at the time as well, but it hasn't moved. We can't just we can't give out that information because we don't have permission from her work. I don't understand that. What? <laughs> About to make and model the vehicle. I have a work van that was also parked in the driveway. Why is that? Uh, if it's out in the driveway where people can see it, why is that privileged information? I would assume that if they told where she worked, that there'd be a lot of people out there. What do you think, Blue? Yeah, definitely, man. There would be you know people going around or harassing the company, so. Yeah. But why not call the work company and say, hey, come pick up the van, you know? Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, but I don't think, I don't know if it's there or not. I haven't seen anybody out there in front of their house protesting or anything yet. I'm sure it's coming if it hasn't happened already. Yeah, see, everybody, somebody, everybody knows where she works. That ain't a secret. Huh, that's true. I mean, but, well, I mean, everybody on YouTube might know. I mean, there's there's few people that do know, but not everybody's on YouTube. Like, I have no idea where she works, to be honest with you. Blue, do you know where she works? No, I don't. We just don't have permission from her company to divulge that information. Have you asked? No, ma'am, we have not. Nobody's asked us so that, that question. So that was, okay, so you have a work van. Um, question to you, Ms. Prophet, what do you do for a living? I am an installation technician. That night, was the work van blocking your driveway? <laughs> Could someone go in and out of your driveway? The van is parked at the back of my driveway, so someone can pull in, yes. Got it. Do you park your Infinity SUV in the garage or outside the garage? In the garage. In the garage. Do you have a an automatic garage door? With a clicker. Right. Uh, do you leave that up or down at night? Down. Could anybody lift it up? Like, is there an on and off button outside? Or do you have to know a code or have the clicker to open it? You'd have to know the code or have the clicker. Does Sebastian know the code? Not to the garage door, but to the man doors. Not to the garage door, but to the house doors? The regular door, yes. So is there a code to get in your home or do you use a regular key? There's a code. And he knows that code? Yes, ma'am. Question. I- I'm just trying to figure out how he would have gotten out or if somebody came into the home. Could they have gotten through the garage door? No, unless they know the code or had the clicker, which they did not. Do you lock your doors at night? Yes, ma'am. Could he have left on his own through those doors? He could, yes, ma'am. But I heard in another interview where Mr. Proudfoot said he was not a, quote, wanderer. He didn't wander around. He never left the home before on his own. Is that right? Correct. We haven't had issues with him running or taking off in the past. Okay, let me ask you a couple of questions. What do you think about that, Blue? Like, they, they haven't had issues with him, you know, running off. And potentially that's what happened here. Possibly. What do you think? I mean, uh, that that's a good thing, um, but as older they get, you know, they can get a little bit rambunctious or curious. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's never that it's never going to happen. It can happen. But my question is, like, I mean, I had to get more information. But did they do when the police showed up? Did they find look for tracks? Because they, you know, everybody says he left the shoes behind. Was there barefoot tracks? I mean, his foot barefooted tracks outside, leading in a certain direction. Nothing like that. I don't think so. You know, not 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 to. They've been searching a couple of different areas. I'm sure if they found those tracks, they wouldn't be searching. You know, the landfill or or the construction buildings in the back or uh, you know any of those other places. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and crane operators make pretty decent money, so I'm pretty sure they live in a nice nice house. Any any like a, a mobile home that's all tore apart. It seems like both their vehicles, uh, you know, are over forty thousand. You know, at theater even used because even if they're older vehicles, they're not cheap models. Let's continue this point regarding the doors do you have any home surveillance anything at all that would have given us an idea or a clue if the door had been opened or not or a window not directly from our house well then from where uh that's what we were hoping that uh, neighborhood ring cameras and may have picked something up gotcha i want to go back to that night you said you were up till midnight you were reading something what were you reading a chapter for school a chapter for school are you in school i was yes ma'am i've since dropped my classes for the time what are you studying business administration where do you go to school so that night you go to bed at midnight after you've been talking to Mr. Prophet on the phone. You put the dogs away in a cage, a crate inside the home, and you go to bed. Did you check on Sebastian at that time? I did not. 
Okay. Do you normally? Not typically. It, since he's gotten older, I've not been checking on him as frequently throughout the night because normally he's, you know, he's good to go in his room once he goes to bed. Earlier, you had stated you heard a noise in his room before you went to bed. What time is that? Around 10 o'clock. 10 p.m. What did it sound like? Just a thud. A thud. You stated that you said, look, I don't care what you're doing in there. Go to bed. Is that right? I was on the couch, which is near his room. And I said, uh, Bubba, did you fall out of the bed? And he said, no, ma'am. And I said, well, whatever you're doing in there, knock it off and go to sleep. So you heard his voice at 10 p.m.? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any idea what the sound actually was? I do not, no. What do you think about that, Blue? About the thud at 10 and uh, what she said to him, potentially? Well, to me, that could be two things. Either somebody horse playing around. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Um, or, you know, sometimes I would like to see, like what she asked here in a second, uh, spoiler alert, where his bedroom is, like, is there a window he can crawl out of? What if he was, you know, trying to crawl out and he fell? You know? hmm. Yeah, but I think there'd be some sort of evidence of that, you know what I mean? Like disturbance on the ground, disturbance in the dirt, you know, things of that nature. It should be, yeah. But grass, I mean, you ain't going to see it. They said it's mulch, which sometimes you might see a little step mark, but sometimes just brush your hand back and forth and mulch looks like nothing's ever touched it. Yeah, but that would that, uh, that would imply that whoever did that uh, was attempting to cover their tracks. You know what I'm saying, Blue? I'm, I'm not necessarily there yet. You know what I mean? All right, so I got the email uh, about, so in, in the live chat I had asked, I'd seen somebody saying that there was threats to the um, stepfather, or to the biological father and, and stuff about a, a GoFundMe. Uh, let's bring it up. I, I don't know who this person is, Sandra Cook Swank, either. Who is it? I'm not sure who that is, but it says here, I would like to thank everyone for all your support through this. I would also like to thank uh, people who have shared the GoFundMe. I shared it on my personal page, but did not share it on any of the pages. As I was told by Christopher, if I didn't take it down, I'd be hearing from his attorney. I'm, I'm assuming that's this is going to be Seth's sister, I believe. Yeah, bio dad's sister. What, what do you think there, Blue, that she's claiming that Christopher said that he, he would they'd be hearing from his attorney? I mean, because maybe he's seen that they're trying to take advantage of the situation. But what if they're using that to be able to hire a team to go look, a search team? So I mean, Seth, he's been out there working, looking for his kid like 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 his kid is missing. I mean, I don't like you would expect somebody to as well. And, you know, he's taking time off. You know, he's not also he's also not working because he's out there searching. So I don't see you know anything wrong with him you know asking for help so that way he can continue his search. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get it. I and get so it. and I don't understand why Christopher would tell them to take it down. I, I don't know. Maybe that would interfere with something. I, I don't know the, the reward. I, I don't know. I mean, and this is they're saying it's for something ridiculous like, oh, it's a funeral fund right now. Uh, don't do that too early. Robin Rogers, which is I'm assuming Seth's uh, mother, says yet another lie exposed. CP has said on multiple interviews uh, that he has left the door open for me to contact them. I will admit that I left a very emotional message on 316, her Facebook Messenger, and CP. I'm, I'm assuming is is Chris um, uh, Proudfoot. So I, I left a very emotional message on her Facebook. Maybe it's Katie. Also, he says yeah. her, she put her. And tell her to tell the truth for the first time in our life. I did tell her that if anything has happened to my grandson, I would push death penalty penalty. Yesterday, I received the following from KP, which I believe is that's Kathy. Uh, Robin, please do not contact us again. Your messages have all been forwarded to law enforcement as well as the request for you to no longer contact us. Forward whatever you like, KP. I am a very angry grandmother and you're not that looking for my grandson. I'm not afraid of the Proudfoot, Proudfoot family or the little man you are married to. This country has something called freedom of speech. Unfortunately, I mean, there is also harassment and this would kind of fall into those lines. So I would just recommend once somebody says, hey, don't contact me no more, not to, because in the state of Texas, it, it is a crime to continue uh, to to contact somebody afterwards. Now, she says that she left an emo emotional message. She's pushing. She's talked about pushing the death penalty. I mean, Blue, if you if, if you're I mean, if you're in this situation, wouldn't, wouldn't you ask her to leave you alone, too? Yeah, I'd be like, hey, you know, but if it was Mike, I'd be looking around, man. That's the difference. No, I get that, man. But mm -hmm. even if, so you have to, but we also have to understand too that, you know, law enforcement, if they were like, hey, there's a lot of heat, we don't want you out there. All you're going to do is cause more problems. And, you know, people are out to swarm you, ask you questions. They want to interview you. It's going to be like a paparazzi out there when it comes to like the YouTubers and the mainstream media and the interviewers. And police and searchers told you not to go. Would you say, F it, I'm still going? I probably would, but you know, like just like in other cases, I would probably, you know, to be effective, I would maybe not make myself part of a big group, maybe a smaller group, and 
you know, maybe I don't think we can do that, man. Disguised out there, you know. Yeah, but I mean, if you're wearing a disguise, then people are going to say that you're not out there. I would just, you know, and it, and if you didn't want people to to hound you, you couldn't tell them that you're out there in disguise either. Yeah. So if if the Proudfoots are out there in disguise, which I doubt they are, how would we know? You know what I mean? So, um, if, if law enforcement was adamant about them not going out there and how it could be a, uh, it, it could cause more of an issue, I can see them agreeing. I mean. Yeah, but man, there's there's a lot of crazy situations where happening to me personally. I would be out there no matter what anybody told me. Yeah, that's just me. Oh yeah, man. And I'm not saying that they're they should be or they shouldn't be or or any of those things. I understand how it looks, but I'm also under you know looking at it from fresh eyes right now, and it appears that these folks have had you know a lot of suspicion on them for a while from from a lot of people. And you know, I'm just saying I I would do my best to if in, in law enforcement if I was a law enforcement officer not allow that person to be out there. I don't want to babysit them. I don't want to have to have somebody else out there making sure nobody harms that person, making sure that they're okay. You know, the, the last thing that you need is another person going missing or hurt or worse during the search for somebody who's missing. From a logistical standpoint, I don't know if they were asked or not asked to to search, but that could be a reason or that they're not out there. And and if they haven't and they just haven't gone out there, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the only persons that can answer that is them, right? Bio dad was also at shift work the night he went missing. Someone had said bio dad was closer than stepdad. Hey, see, I mean, that's why people get suspicious for no reason. In my, in my opinion, sometimes like if, if bio dad was at work and just because he lived closer, there's proof that he was at work. You know what I mean? If he were to go out his window, what would he step on? Mulch and um, bushes. Did you say mulch or mush? M mulch. 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 Okay. Um, has he ever gone out the window before? No, ma'am. Is his home, is his room on the front of the house or the back of the house? Front. Front. Do any of your neighbors ring him? Yeah. Bio dad is a correctional <laughs> officer. There's no way in hell he could be at there and, you know, anywhere near. The Proudfoot's home. The, that is heavily guarded and secured. And if you're if you're checked in and you you somehow gotten out and they think you're still in there, that'd be crazy. What do you think, Blue? Yeah, I mean, especially if he's a correctional officer. Yeah. Um, you're you're signed in and you're behind some locked in gate doors because they don't want the prisoners to be able to walk out. So, and the sheriff are the people that do work as correctional. That's where you start out at, like in San Antonio. All right. They start, they start at the corrections and then they they move up. That is true. Cams point toward your house. Could they pick that up? They do, but um, it's so dark that they can only see it. After it gets so dark at night, they can only see certain things where there's light. I thought there were the two lights on. On the opposite side of the house. Can we talk about Sebastian's shoes? Why are you convinced Sebastian left without shoes on? Or are you? Well, the reason that that came about is because all of his shoes are accounted for inside the house still. Are you positive? I'm positive. How do you know what clothes he was wearing? Uh, the clothes that we described are the ones I saw him in when, I, when he went to bed. That morning, you woke up at 6 o'clock. Is that the normal time you wake up? Yes, ma'am. Are you a heavy sleeper? Off and on. Do you take any medication at night that would make you sleep? No, ma'am. But you heard nothing? I did not, know. So we know he is alive and well at 10 p.m. at 6 a.m. He's gone. You say he's never left before. Is that right? Correct. He's never run off before. And I, can I confirm, where was his bio dad at the time he went missing? I believe he was at work in Nashville. Had there been any family argument or altercation prior to him mi going missing? No, ma'am. And Mr. Proudfoot, when did you leave town? Early February. You had been gone for days before he went missing. Is that correct? Correct, ma'am. Had you visited home since you left? You said from when I initially left? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I, I came home February 26th, the morning I was told he was missing. Mm -hmm. From the time that you left for the job in Memphis to February 26th, did you visit the home? Yes, ma'am. When? Uh, I was home. I can't give exact dates. Um, law enforcement has told me not to provide exact dates, but I had been home multiple times prior to February, and then I left early February, and then didn't come back till February 26th, the morning he was missing. So you were not home from the time you left early February till February 26th, is that right? Correct, ma'am. So he wasn't home for a while. Yeah, he's gone for a couple of days. I mean, I said those job sets, they're the crane operators, you're there until the job's done, so either you, you come back on weekends or you come back every two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And if they're working that type of schedule and he doesn't show up to work, they're going to look for another crane operator. Definitely. Yeah. Especially if it's crane operators. They only have a few of those. You have to be certified. Not everybody can just jump on a crane and work on it. And you get, and if you're, you know, imagine those bridges are building here and the crane operators decided not to show up for a couple of days. They put millions of dollars behind. Oh, yeah. Yep. And, you know, they have things planned like road closures and things of that nature that they have to have done at a certain time and, and schedule. So, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, there they got to get certain parts built so they can get the next part of the concrete poured, the next wall up, get, you know, keep right. the schedules. Where were you living in Memphis? Yeah. I have an RV trailer that I stay in at an RV park. RV park. Okay. Falling. 
So an RV park, depending on the, I've seen this guy's house, pretty nice home, $700,000 home, nice, nice area. You know, I've seen his RV, you know, you think this is the, uh, you know, the backwoods RV park, or do you think this is more of an upscale R- RV park? I'm going to say, I haven't seen it, but the, by the house, it's going to be luxury fifth wheel kind of RV. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be the single person, you know, what is it, uh, Rusty's from National Lampoon's Christmas, and it's going to be what, Rusty's yeah. RV. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be something, you know, kind of fancy and upscale. I mean, the RV he has is nice, the house he has is nice, he's got a Chevy diesel truck, those aren't, those are a pretty penny, you yeah, know. Um, used are like 35 and up, just for use 200 down mile kind of drug and then you have need some z's saying no crane operator jobs closer to home than three hours strange man money talks you know out here in west texas people leave for you know weeks at a time to go work on the oil fields and they'll come yeah. back home and to me none of this stuff is crazy you know um roughnecks they head on out there to the to midland odessa they're out there for two three four weeks at a time and then they come home for about a week or two and then they go back out and yeah, my buddy does the you know oil refineries out in the coast, and he does one month on, one month off. Yeah. So. Uh, somebody says he was staying at the Yogi Bear campground. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if that's true or not, but if that is, I'm gonna go research that. But, and there, if it's the same one like the one here in in Texas, those are like high end. You probably get a cheaper rate if you do the whole week, but yeah, they're at the high end one. Like in the summertime, just for a tent site is like ninety dollars. Oh. And 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 do you think that those places have surveillance around them? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. I mean, my the crazy part about it is my, my mother-in-law used to work at an RV park mm-hmm. when they stayed there, and there was always um, surveillance in the entrance to see who's coming in and out because people like to deal from RV parks because you have no, you're not able to store everything inside your RV, so they have all their stuff outside sometimes or in little storage units. You know, you might have your camping chairs, your barbecue pit. They would have crews come by and steal all their stuff. Oh so, yeah, I'm, dude. I'm pretty sure they have a. Uh, cameras going in and out of those RV parks. Yeah, one hundred percent. So I think they 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 probably know exactly where he was that night. Yeah, you I know, know. I, even the one of my in laws lived. There was no security at the RV park. But those cameras. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's cameras showing who goes in and out of that park. Because like I said, people steal from them all the time. Mm-hmm. One hundred percent, man. Especially the nice ones. Because what kind of rich person is going to say, yeah, oh, that that. $150 lawn chair is going to be okay out there. That, you know, $300 barbecue pit I can throw in the back of a little Chevy truck. Mm-hmm. It'll be there in the morning. Sometimes it won't. Crazy stuff, man. So if he's, he's you know, out there, they have, if they have him under surveillance going into his house and let's just say, or an RV, and let's just say there's a camera that has uh, an RV there. And let's say he comes out and he leaves at, I don't know if he was at work at six o'clock in the morning, he's probably leaving at four or something. You know, how, how can he get all the way to um, you know, Hendersonville and, and back? To be on the phone and also to call nine or call the sheriff's department at the same time. I, I highly doubt that this guy's physically involved. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't see the dots connecting there when it comes to real tangible evidence. I understand some of the things in his history and stuff like that, but you know, just because somebody, you know, he 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 talks about it here, but even if somebody is, a, you know, commits a crime, that doesn't doesn't mean or that that escapes them of being a victim of a crime as well. It may be karma or whatever it is, but, you know, somebody could be a, a dirt bag and then something happened to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, it happens sometimes. And the hard part is um, your history will come back and haunt you. And, you know, now it's haunting them. And it's one of the things where, like, it's we're focusing on this instead of, hey, let's focus on where this kid's at. Where could mm-hmm. he have gone? All right. Now, let's continue this. Going back up on that morning, you search the home as Proudfoot. Then you get in your vehicle and you start searching. Did Sebastian yes. know how to drive? No, ma'am. Was your car in the same location when you woke up that morning as it was the night before? Yes, ma'am. Has your car been searched by police? Multiple times, yes, ma'am. Uh, have scent dogs looked at your car? Yes, ma'am. So your car's in the same place. You get in the car, you start looking in the neighborhood for him. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Then you call Mr. Proudfoot, right? I believe I was already on the phone with him at that point. Question, who called 911? I did. You did. Yes, what ma'am. time? Uh, without looking at a call, I can't the exact time, but on or about uh, six twenty. And see, right here, he says he called nine one one, and then that ends up not being the case. They didn't call nine one one; they called the, directly to the sheriff. I don't think he's purposefully trying to be deceitful in this moment. I think he's just trying to answer the question, you know, and 
probably not go into too many details. I think he's probably been told he talks too much, probably by somebody. If they have an attorney, that's what I would have told them. What do you think about that, Blue? That I don't think it was 911 that was called, it was the sheriff's department. Yeah, I mean, those are two different numbers you're calling. So that's why everybody's saying it's a little sketch. And, and calling on three way, like I said, I don't think that's suspicious. I mean, you know, if I was out of town and my stepson was missing and my my wife is going, you know, is a little bit hysterical, but she's the only one that can answer some of the questions. I'd, be, I'd want to be on the call just to kind of calm her down and 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 help her throughout that situation. You know, you're not going to just be like, oh, you know, leave her in the wind. That's that's your wife. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and especially if they really didn't do anything, if there's if he has no involvement and he doesn't believe that she would have done something, I, I don't find those things suspicious. And had you guys been talking on the phone before 6 a.m. or did you initially call Mr. Prophet at the time you realized Sebastian was gone? I called him when I realized Sebastian was gone. Have you guys been out looking for Sebastian? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma we were given information that you guys have left the home. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Why? I'm going back to work. You're going back to work. What about you, Miss Prophet? No, I'm not going back to work. Not yet, at least. Did you leave the home also, Miss Prophet? Yes, ma'am. Why? To accompany my husband going back to work, and then I'm coming back. Okay. When will you be back? Do you know yet? No, not yet. Are you concerned about being away while the search is ongoing? Absolutely, I am. Then why are you going? Because my son could be anywhere, and we're looking everywhere and anywhere. I've got a question for you. Yes, I want to find out about Mr. Proudfoot hitting Sebastian with a belt. What happened? Uh, that was actually several years ago, um, and it to was- Mr. To Mr. Proudfoot, to Mr. Proudfoot, to Mr. Proudfoot. Mr. Yes, Proudfoot, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you were asking Katie. Man, she bit off his head real quick. Mr. Proudfoot. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I like the tactic, to be honest with you. You know? I mean, she's she's I, I, she's been around for a long time. She does some good interviews. I ain't gonna right. lie, but it's uh, some of them are like, man- Take a little chill pill. Nah. I like that, oh, that was good. No, 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 no. I, I prefer this. You know why? Because yeah. you, you can get you can get real answers when you're approached in a situation like this. You know, right. it's like it's like getting hit in the mouth, right? If you're a certain situation where you're not ready for it, and boom, somebody comes out and hits you in the mouth, and and you're it becomes a high stressful situation. It's in, it's designed to create stress and to get some answers to come out. I like the tactic personally. Uh, you know, it's um. It also shows to me that she's not showing him any favoritism. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's, she's being just like she used to be a prosecutor, right? She's being stern, yeah. has to get try to get trying to get the answers that everybody wants. Also, she they haven't been to any of the, the vigils for Sebastian. Does that strike you as odd, Big Blue? A little odd. Yeah, I mean, it, it's I would probably attend those just because you know it might help me heal better. But everybody heals differently. But um, I would think that as at least mom, dad, or stepdad want to be there to see the community, support them, you know, ask for help and thank everybody that's helping. And they put out like emails and stuff like that or a Facebook post thanking everybody that's been helping. Yeah. Or they've been silent. I mean, these guys have been talking a lot yeah. on, on everything, even on Facebook. To me, I think that is a bit of a red flag, not going to any other vigil. It's one thing to be out there in a search party where you're out there in the wilderness, in the middle of nowhere. You know, um, law enforcement might be in one spot and not in another for a while. You know what I mean? You know, you have volunteers that are out there. It'd be it'd be easier for these guys to be a target of something out there on a search. You know, if you're going to a vigil, it's one spot. It's one place. There's probably going to be police officers there. You know, you're probably you know, you're the parents. So you're probably going to be front and center where the majority of this thing's going down at. And you're probably having some law enforcement officers out there in case somebody tries to hassle you. So I, I see this aspect is different than the search. And I do think that this is, you know, probably the most suspicious thing that I've seen so far to this point. Again, I started looking at this case today. Don't bite my head off. I haven't heard or seen everything. And I'm still trying to look at it with an open mind um, yeah. about the entire thing. Yeah. All you pro burgers, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> this is the wrong case. But wrong case. Oh, my bad. My bad. Um, Sebastian had gotten in trouble. He got caught, got caught lying. And we asked, I had asked him, I said, hey, you know, you got to have a punishment for this. He says, yes, sir. And I said, okay. So I gave him a slot with a belt. I don't like this either, right? He 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 swatted his stepson. Now, I, as far as corporal punishment, I'm not going to say whether a person should or shouldn't. When you have somebody that's on the spectrum and and he's answering yes, sir, respectfully because he did something wrong, I'm I'm not, I'm not sure. I see the justification there. What do you think, Blue? Yeah, see, especially I mean, you do have to correct them, but not swat them. Like, hey, don't do that. It's not nice or not good. But when they're on the spectrum, you're like harder, man. It's hard just to because. They sometimes won't understand, even if you're telling them in the nicest voice. Like, no, I understand. I, I get it. I know it's hard, but you also have to have the understanding knowing that it's not, no, you know, some not. of the actions are not out of, it's not completely in control. 
Yeah, you know what I, I mean? Get it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. I, I deal with patients that are off the spectrum all the time, and, and it's not in their control. And it's they're sometimes the hardest people to deal with, or sometimes they're the easiest people to deal with because they're a little bit more understanding. They're yes, okay, you know, compared to somebody that's angry and as I would say the 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 privilege aspect that I want this and I want it now kind of deal. Uh huh. Yeah. So it goes both ways. Oh, I get it. I get it. But legally, I mean, I don't know the laws in Tennessee, but in Texas, if a parent, you know, a mother gives the step parent permission to uh, apply corporal punishment, it's it's not an illegal thing. To me, I think it's just an immoral thing to to do when you have somebody, you know, that maybe in that situation was having an episode versus and it was purposefully being going against, you know, his wishes. I mean, especially when he's responding, yes, sir, and understands and and yeah. went through and complied with the corporal punishment in the manner that he claims it, it did happen. So, yeah, I do think that's that's odd. Well, on his buttocks, on the outside of his clothes, one strap. What did he lie about? At the, honestly, I don't remember at the time, but it was probably something dealing with school because that's the majority where his issues lie. Did he have other issues at school? Now, I know some people are saying that he said somewhere else that it had to do with a belt, that he had forgotten a belt, that he had said that on another YouTube show or podcast. Eh, I, I don't know. And, and I think either way, it's kind of harsh. You know what I mean? What do you think? Yeah, because if it's issues at school, I yeah, would... Definitely be more on the mom's mom's side to take care of it with, you know, maybe dad. And, and you just, you don't have to do corporal punishment, but be more like, hey, counsel, counsel more. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know, man. That's a, it's a hard situation. You know, when I was in law enforcement, we, we took courses on, on mental health and, and how to interact with persons who may be having an episode and stuff. And it wasn't extensive enough then. It's probably not extensive enough now. It's just one of those situations where it, it can be hard, you know, and but these are the parents they understand and should know and so you know, that was his decision apparently it was a couple of years ago they claim it hasn't happened since but that doesn't mean it that's true you know what i'm saying some behavioral stuff but nothing too crazy what kind of behavioral stuff um he has a hard time uh, he's like awkwardly socially like blending in with students so it's a little he's trying to figure out how to do it but respecting people's space he gets a little too close and then kids don't really accept that too much so it kind of causes an issue he'll not stop and he continues on so then it causes an issue and instead of being honest about it he'll, he'll lie like no i didn't okay sebastian about was more. that the first time was that the first time you had ever hit him with a belt yes, what did she say oh i'm gonna rewind that she said something and then, and then nancy cut her off um, but he'll not stop and he continues on so then it causes an issue and instead of being honest about it he'll, he'll lie like no i didn't okay sebastian about was more. that the first time or lying about you or lying about doing homework i don't know man about was that the first time was that the first time you had ever i think it's i think it's doing homework i think that's what yeah. it said lying about doing homework look at him with a belt yes ma'am the one and only time actually when was this uh years ago ma'am at least it wasn't a chunkla any idea how many i don't know man three ten one that can be worse <laughs> than chunkla it, it probably at least three years ago I don't understand how that turned into a CPS or Child Protective Services complaint. How were they that, alerted that, that you hit him with a belt? That did not turn. That did not turn into a CPS report, uh, service call. There were other CPS reports, right? Were they regarding your other child? There is one in regards to my daughter that I know of out in New Mexico with my ex-wife and myself. What happened? At the time, uh, my ex-wife had fled to New Mexico with my daughter. We we're going through a custody and a divorce case at that time. And at the time, when I'd call and try to check in on my daughter, I could never reach my ex-wife at that time. So. A welfare check was requested. Law enforcement told me to call CPS if I had concerns. So I called CPS. Uh, law enforcement did make a welfare call, and that was it. Then how does that turn into a CPS complaint against you? I have no idea, ma'am. There's a lot of misinformation out there right now in regards to my New Mexico case that actually has no relevance to the, the Sebastian case. Then was there even a CPS complaint against you in New Mexico? Uh, not, that, not that I am aware of. Um, and my attorney and myself are well educated on my, my case. And there's nothing that we know of. I wonder what attorney he's talking about. He's talking about his family attorney that's going through custodial stuff. Because this is what it sounded like. It was like a divorce stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure he's got a he's got an attorney now because he's got so much um, heat from everything that they're doing. They don't need some representation when they go to court. If they go to court. <laughs> you can't put the horse before the cart there, Blue. You got to stay open-minded yeah. yet. I mean, I know, I know, I know. But that's what I mean. Like, yeah. Not even for for the job like in case they ever get called in for, for questioning and most people lawyer up yeah do you think that it's 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 strange that they lawyered up if that ends up being the case um at this moment i would say yes it's still early you want to hopefully try to find your child so you're not going to want to hint any of the information you can give to help yeah hinder it i mean I'm gonna yeah. Hinder hint. yeah no i get it uh, see that's the way i i i would slip my mind and maybe that's the way they, they speak too yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're under extreme stress, pressure, you know, you're on TV, 
millions of people are watching, uh, whether it's on the actual program through here, through anybody else that airs this and has their reaction as well or commentary, you know, you're, you're going to it's going to reach millions of people. I mean, there should be some nerves associated with that. I don't know. I, I'm not harping on everything that they say, you know, and when it comes to him, like I've said, if they got proof he was out there and he was in a high end RV park, I just find it very difficult that they're going to be able to pin anything on him outside of maybe perhaps if, if mom was involved. I think that's the only thing that they can probably do at this point, because fairly positive police would know if he was there or not, or if he's lying. Was there a TRO taken out against you regarding <laughs> yes, your daughter? Uh, not a TRO, but a TPO. A temporary protective order. Why was that taken out? Uh, so in regards to that case, uh, my ex-wife had a TPO put against her in, the, in Tennessee at the time. When we went to court, that got dissolved. I was ordered to hand my daughter back over to my ex-wife at the time. She gets in a truck. She flies to New Mexico. Two days later, she files one in retaliation. Is it still in place? No, ma'am. That was dropped within, I think, two weeks of it being put in place. <laughs> I've got a question about the belt incident. You're telling me that was... So Nancy Grace kind of graces over that. No pun intended. Um, mm -hmm. It's graces over it and leaves that alone. Why do you think that is? Um, because it is... Uh... Honestly, I don't know, but one of the reasons I would I would say is probably because if it got dismissed, it's still going to be sealed in the court documents. Uh, no, not necessarily. And that stuff can get expunged. And TPO is temporary protective order. So I'm not the reason why I think she kind of graces over it because as an attorney, she probably is familiar with some of those tactics, and I, I think she's probably aware that that's something that is kind of commonly done. You know, when when people have a nasty divorce, you, you'd be surprised. Well, probably not, but you'd be surprised some of the accusations that go back and forth in a nasty divorce. And, you know, all of those have to be investigated because regardless of what it may appear to be, you know, they could be telling the truth and you need to go in there and, and, and investigate. You know, she, she kind of graces, graces over it, I think, for a reason. I don't think it's important. It's the only time that you ever hit Sebastian with a belt. Yes, ma'am. And you're also telling me that did not make it to CPS? No, ma'am, that did not. Question. Yes, ma'am. Regarding Fate's furniture. Yes, a few days after Sebastian goes missing, did you replace furniture in Faith's room? No, ma'am. I have not replaced any furniture in my daughter's room. Is there any new furniture in the home? Yes, ma'am. There's a bed that was given to me and it's currently in my garage. Has anything been taken out of the home? No, ma'am. I was curious about a statement that Miss Proudfoot made earlier that canine dogs hit on the barn around the home and near a retention pond. Did that happen? I'm not sure about the barn. But the retention pond, yes. Because law enforcement says the dogs did not hit. But Miss Lee says they did hit around the retention pond. I wonder which pond they're talking about. I've, I've looked up the uh, the map. I know exactly where they live. I, I'm not familiar where the pond is, though, so, and I don't see it on this map. If anybody knows, uh, let me know more or less in what direction to go from here to find that pond that they're referring to. So there's been a lot of miscommunication in regards to what is and what is not uh, to help clear that up. Um, law enforcement has actually spoken directly with me, showed me a few things. What I can tell you is there, from day one, there was five dogs that started the uh, stand for the search. And then after that, from the next eight days out from that, there have been dogs from all over the country that have come in and done searches and had sent hits in various locations. Um, but I would say the a certain percentage of them tend to go toward the same spot, which would have been a retention pond. So the law enforcement dogs did not hit on the retention pond. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying they did. There was at least three that I know for a fact that did hit on the retention pond. And the pond has been drained, correct? And there's nothing there? Yes, ma'am. They have walked it, drained it, and there's nothing. That, the retention pond was only knee deep anyways. On one occasion, Mr. Proudfoot, you stated that you and Mrs. Proudfoot have been, quote, vetted and cleared of foul play. That was stated <laughs> on Chronicles of Olivia. Is that true? What do you mean by that? Yes. So after working with law enforcement of all agencies, um, they have actually told us that there is no foul play, no nefarious issues. We've been cleared um, of all wrongdoing. We are working extremely cooperative with all law enforcement agencies uh, at any point in time that they've called, come to the house, uh, anything. Yeah, that's true, Blue. They've been cleared. There's no sign of foul play. I mean, well, one, do you, do you think they're, do you buy it? Do you think they're, 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 they're saying the truth? I mean, I would say probably yes. I would say they probably are telling the truth because if they get caught lying, wouldn't it be perjury still? Yeah, you can't lie to a police officer. Police can lie to you, but you can't lie back. Yeah. Double-edged sword. I would say I think they're telling the truth. I think that it, it would be easy to to say no, that's not the truth. You know, we're we're still looking at them. You know, I've uh I was watching the press conference when they were talking about the two thousand miles that they've walked. Which I know some people were asking about the two thousand miles and saying that they're investigating something in New Mexico. Somebody had sent me that, and I was like, no, I don't think that's what the case was. I, I was watching the press conference and they said that if you tally up all the police officers, all the foot officers that were walking, all of their collective walking together was like 2000 miles. That's a lot of walking, you know, and it doesn't mean that, you know, one mile straight could be like a lot of people. 
It doesn't mean that it, that they walk different miles either. You know what I mean? Typically, when you do a search, there's one person, and then X amount of feet later, there's another person. X amount of feet later, there's another person. If they all walk, if there's ten of them, and they all walk one mile, you know, that's ten miles right there. Yeah, but they normally do arms length apart. Sometimes that way you're walking close together and stepping in front of you that way. Um, the grid, they, kind of, they, they break off a grid, the grid search you're talking about, right? Yeah. Was Sebastian angry or upset before he disappeared? No, ma'am. Not, not to my knowledge. What is your theory about where is Sebastian? I wish I knew where he was, to be honest. I, your theory, your theory. I think it's possible that someone has my son. Why? Because I feel like if he had been close to the house or had walked off, that we would found him by now with as many people as we had searching. Have you checked his social media? He doesn't have social media. Have you checked his phone? His phone has been thoroughly checked, yes, ma'am. Have you handed your phones to police, both of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we have. Has police searched your, all of your devices, your laptop, your iPad, everything? Everything, yes, ma'am. Other than you, Miss Proudfoot, who is the last person that saw or heard Sebastian alive the Sunday before he went missing? Uh, two of his aunts, um, a cousin, and um, the staff where we had dinner. And that was at BJ's the night before or the bowling alley? So BJ's, and then we went to the bowling alley, and then after the bowling alley, we went to dinner before coming home. I want to follow up again on the dogs hitting. Earlier, Ms. Proudfoot had stated the dogs hit around the house, the barn, and at the retention pond. Is that correct? I don't know about the barn, uh, the barn, but I do know that they did track to the pond, yes. Did the dogs also hit around the house? Yes, yes ma'am. On the outside of the house? Yes, yes ma'am. Were they scent dogs or cadaver dogs? They brought in uh, both cadaver and uh, tracking dogs. Which dog hit, a cadaver dog or a scent dog? Scent dog. It's all been scent dogs that have hit. The cadaver dogs have not hit on anything that we know of. That's good to know. That the cadaver dogs haven't hit on anything, uh, that there's been scent dogs that they, they're aware of that have been you know hit in, in, on the house, outside of the house, leading up to the pond. That kind of tells me he wandered off. What do you think, Blue? Yeah, I mean, that is a good thing. They haven't found anything close to the house. Because uh, the only thing about those dogs is um, they can only go out so many miles. They won't find you to get, get into a car. You can only leave in a car. Right. But, I mean, if you go into the, the pond, and I'm assuming that pond is not surrounded by a car or, or a roadway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and yeah. if somebody abducted them, they would have had to have parked by the pond, go down there, pick them up, walk them back. You know what I mean? And and if this is a dirted area, like there's dirt or this is you know on the elements, I think you'd probably see evidence of a vehicle parked out there, whether it be track uh, tire trails or impressions in the grass, things like that. Um, you would see. I mean, I would say show the picture of the house so people can see the layout. I know it's in there. I think that they usually just park in the street and he walks out on the street barefoot. It wasn't like a rough terrain that he has to walk on. I mean, not back here or in the front of the house, right? If he if he leaves onto the street now, but if he takes off towards the pond, I'm, I'm not familiar where the pond is at. Um, this is his home. You know, did he have to? And I believe she mentioned something about the sunroom. You know, maybe perhaps if he exited through there, uh, I think I have a picture of it somewhere right here. I mean, he's going into the backyard where it's pretty, pretty uh, wilderness. Like here, here's a, a view here. This is the neighborhood. This is the construction to the right. And then, you know, out here, I mean, you have a house here, a house there, but that's, that's a lot of wooded area right there. If he were to wander it off and, you know, in front of his house and gone into the, see this, I think I saw, I'd seen a pond somewhere on this side right here. He wandered off this way. I mean, there's this roadway that he walked through the yards. I don't know if that's the pond though. That's the other thing too. So, hmm. What do you believe Sebastian was wearing when he disappeared? And would that have been what he slept in? Yes. So the clothes, the the black sweatpants with the white stripes and the long sleeve black shirt, that is what he went to bed in. Um, and the reason that I believe he was still wearing those clothes is because when we searched, I did not find those clothes in the house. So I have to assume that that's what he was still wearing. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you say that's what he wore when he went to bed? Yes, ma'am. Joining us right now, in addition to Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot, the bio mom and stepdad of Sebastian, an all-star panel, first to Brian Trasher joining us, vice president of the Cajun Navy, who has joined the search. Brian, thank you for being with us. Who asked you to join the search? Well, we had deployed a team up to Nashville, Tennessee last week um, in response to the missing college student, Riley Strain. Um, and uh, we stayed up there until he was found. While we were in the area, we had a lot of people reaching out to us on social media. Um, saying that there was a young boy who had been missing for several weeks that was only about 20 miles away from where we were. So we, we talked to a few people, got some information, and decided to uh, deploy part of our team that was already up there to Sumter County to investigate and see what we could do to help out. You went on your own. Were you asked to join? We were asked to join. I'm not uh, sure specifically uh, who some of our people talked to, but we always we get requests all the time, and we'll reach out. We'll try to get either a family member or a close friend of the family just so we know we're, we're talking to people connected to the family. And, um, and somebody had uh, reached out and asked, asked us to join since we already had assets so close. Summer County. Tell me what you have been doing, Brian Trash, or everyone with me, the VP of the Cajun Navy, who has joined in the search. You can find them at CajunNavyRelief.com. Brian, tell me what you guys have been doing. 
uh, just real quick, the United Cajun Navy were the original uh, group that everybody hears about. There's other groups that use the Cajun Navy name to try to fundraise off of our efforts. Uh, Cajun Navy Relief is not uh, affiliated with us at all. We are www.unitedcajunnavy.org. We're, we're the original. We're the real ones. Yeah, hmm. I, I, I'm what glad exactly? they got a, an actual search team out there. Yeah. Because sometimes, like, the Vanessa Gillian case, you know, I took a, an actual search team to find her. When the police searched that same area and couldn't find her, they had more, you know, another one that found the case and everything here. They had not even been found yet. You know, and, and the other thing is, too, these guys were in the area. They were helping with the Riley Strain case, and they went up to assist. He also said that this was several weeks after the disappearance. I think we should kind of keep that in mind when it comes to if his dogs caught any scent outside. I don't know how long the scent lasts. You know what I mean? Is it possible that it you know, was no longer there after a few weeks? The one that the Proudfoots were referencing were from, from law enforcement in the area. That was happened maybe a little bit closer to the dawn of the disappearance. What do you think? Yeah, I would say if it would have been closer to the disappearance, it's a lot better, more scent trails with the dogs. This is, you know, maybe they have an idea. Maybe the police hadn't found something. They hadn't released it. And maybe they, they told these guys, hey, you're good to start over here. But I think all, at the end of the day, they all want to work with each other. The same objective is to try to find either the, the boy alive, find closure for the family. Yeah, exactly. So we we had uh, a canine, our own canine team uh, who was already participating in the search for Riley Strain, uh, up there searching around. We've uh, talked with the uh, lead investigator with with uh, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, uh, Agent Simmons. Um, we've talked a lot with him and trying to coordinate efforts because we always try to coordinate law enforcement, make sure we're not getting in the way, duplicating efforts or or uh, putting out any. Uh, you know what, uh, Mr. Trasher, let me just cut the chase here. Isn't it true that this weekend, pursuant to your search, that cadaver dogs hit in an area that had been closed off because of a prior hurricane and it is on federal property? Bones and other items were found at that time. I found that very odd as it would relate to Sebastian. Even if it was Sebastian, his body would not have been skeletonized at this time. Can you tell me now that what was found over the weekend is not connected to Sebastian? Yes, no. No. Not no, that, connected that, to that, that hit, Sebastian. That hit, that hit was, yeah, that, that's correct. That hit was not connected to Sebastian. Okay. And joining me also, in addition to Brian Trasher, who has been leading the Cajun Navy in its search for Sebastian. Uh, hold on, Brian. Other than those hits, have there been any other dog hits in and around the home or elsewhere? Uh, not from our canine team. I'm very concerned, Brian, as you can imagine, because LA law enforcement has stated there were no canine hits outside the home, which I find very, very disturbing, uh, because if he had gone outside particularly barefoot, there would definitely have been a scent trail. Now, we're hearing from the Proudfoots that there was a hit around that um, retention pond. How far is that pond from your home, Mr. Proudfoot? Less than probably half a mile if you walk the whole path. Is it through wooded area? Would he have had to walk through the woods to get there? No, man. You can actually walk either the main road or the subdivision. So the construction site is a subdivision, a uh, new addition that's being built, and they have a road that's going to be tied into our subdivision. So you could actually walk up that way, or you could walk to the main road and walk into it. Did Sebastian ever sleepwalk? No, ma'am. So he would have had to leave the house undetected by Katie and walk all the way to that retention pond. Did the dogs follow the trail a half a mile? Yes, ma'am. They followed the trail all the way to that retention pond? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma that's very curious, as they are saying the dogs didn't pick anything up. Um Back to you, Brian Trasher. Did you guys search anywhere other than that federal property where the false positive? What do you think about that, Big Blue? Law enforcement saying they didn't hit a trail, but they're saying that they did. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think somebody's get their story straight with the right information. And if they're not the owners of the dogs, then I would say they're probably might be mistaken. I don't know. I mean, they said that they got a hit and it led all the way to the pond. So where where was that? The I'm trying to find it where law enforcement said no and when law enforcement said no that they hadn't had any hit. I would say, where's the law enforcement team doing a search and rescue in the water if they mm -hmm. had a team hit near the pond? Well, they drained it and they walked it and there was nothing there, according to the Proudfoots, you know? So, you know, is it possible that law enforcement didn't want that information out? It could be. You know, what direction he may have walked to? I mean... You can have everybody and their mother out there looking and dis disturbing all the crime scene if there mm -hmm. is one. You know, law enforcement scaling back the searches. Uh, they talk about this as an investigation instead of a, a search and rescue. Uh, do you think they got information that makes them believe that there could be something else that would be uh, needing an investigation? They, they, they can. Honestly, they probably, they probably could have, especially if they did, you know, pick up a scent somewhere. They, they might have been finding some items out there, like clothing. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Or maybe it was where if they did pick up a scent, maybe it was where they, the young man laid down for the night. Let's continue yes, this. No. Joining me is Courtney Lasky, uh, high profile behavior analyst, autism expert, chief clinical officer with Little Starts Therapy. Courtney, thank you for being with us. At this juncture, we know Sebastian to be most likely with people he doesn't know if, in fact, he is still alive. How would that affect a young boy with autism? 
it would affect him greatly. Um, based on the diagnosis of autism, we know that they typically have deficits with communication, um, social skills, and they display some rigid and repetitive behaviors. If, in fact, he is with someone else who does not know him well, um, that would be entirely out of his routine. He could be engaging in behaviors he hasn't engaged in before. Um, he could be looking for an escape. He could be looking to get out of those aversive situations. Um, we know that not every autistic individual uh, will wander, but those who do wander, um, 36%, it's to get out of um, an aversive situation. It's to get away from something that's overwhelming or overstimulating to them. Ms. Proudfoot, does he know your phone number? Can he call you if he could get access to a phone? We have gone over my phone number. I don't know that in a high stress time he would remember it, but yes, I have okay. gone him my phone number. Was he ever allowed to go visit friends' homes? He didn't get invited, but had he been, yes, we have had play dates in the past. Would he go there on foot? No, ma'am. Uh, joining me now is Lauren Conlon, investigative journalist, host of the Outlier podcast, host of Corruption, What Happened to Grant Solomon. And you can find her at laurenconlon.com. Lauren, thank you so much for being with us. What can you tell me about that stretch of road, if anything, between Sebastian's home and that retention pond? Well, look, Nancy, I mean, I think like everything else about this case, it is very confusing because the public hasn't heard much from the police. We haven't heard much from the Proudfoots, obviously, when it comes to that or Seth Rogers. And now I'm learning a lot here as I hear Chris Proudfoot say, OK, we can't speak about this because of law enforcement. And now with the Cajun Navy coming in, I think a lot of us are very excited that they are going to basically canvas this road and they are actually telling civilians to hang back. Nobody needs to search this anymore. You need to stop. You need to stop helping and let us work with law enforcement and take over. Now, I called the Sumner County Sheriff's Office yesterday because of all the misinformation going around. And I got to be honest with you, they didn't even know what was going on with this road, with the recreation search. They were either very elusive or they were very confused. But either way, it's very concerning because the people, as well as myself, I don't live in Tennessee. I cover a lot of Tennessee. We are very concerned for Sebastian. We are very concerned. And so, okay, so I, I, let I, me just stop you right there, Ms. Collin. Ms. Collin, everyone is concerned. But let me remind everyone that law enforcement is under no duty at all to tell us or anybody else, including the Proudfoots, anything. They are not representing the Proudfoots. They are representing justice. And they will do what they have to do. The fact that they're not giving us a blow by, by blow is their business. Does it mean they're stymied? I don't know. Does it mean they know more than we think they do? I don't know the answer to that. But just because they're not releasing an ongoing investigative file is not a concern to me. At this juncture, I am collecting facts. In the best way I know how. Now, regarding that route. From I agree with her. You know, she's coming up and she's saying it in a certain way that most people or some people may not like. But I agree with her. Police don't have to say anything. In this case or in, in any other case, they represent justice. She's absolutely right. And, you know, to ease the minds of the public isn't in the job description of, police, of a police officer. It's just not. From the Proudfoot home to the retention pond. Is it your understanding, Lauren Conlon? that there were no hits by scent or cadaver dogs along that route. Correct, Nancy. It is my understanding there were no hits from the dogs. It is very confusing. It's confusing. You know, sometimes, Lauren, when we try to put together a puzzle, but we're missing a few pieces and we don't know what piece we're missing, you can't put the puzzle together. We're missing. We're missing things from this puzzle. And right now, I'm on a fact-finding mission. I am pointing the finger at no one because I want to find Sebastian. Uh, I want to go to Dr. Absolutely. Jory Clausen joining me. Uh, and guys, again, please, Proudfoots, uh, Trasher, Lasky, Conlon, jump in if you have a thought or you want to contradict, because a lot of this is elusive. We don't know everything. Uh, to you, Jory Crosby, and joining us, uh, former law enforcement, now faculty, St. Leo University, uh, very well-known psychologist and author of Operation SOS. You can find him at drjory.com. Dr. Jory, thank you for being with us. Many people have made much of the fact that when interviewed, the proud folks do not look at the camera. They look away, they don't cry, and they don't seem upset. Now, that may or may not mean all right well i saw an interview where miss proudfoot was crying quite a bit there was another interview where they didn't show her face and in this interview she's not crying mr proudfoot he appears to be a um he's probably carrying the rock role in this situation the rock the the shoulder you know the to hold his wife up type of role if they're innocent one thing that i had when i was watching the behavioral analyst talk about about uh mr proudfoot they mentioned that he was a crane operator and that would go up high and it's probably you know been in a lot of stressful situations you know being up in up in the sky like that so uh maybe perhaps he's a little bit more collected because of uh, the amount of stress that he's been under when it comes to his work and, and things of that nature i just take that into consideration when it comes to him and when it comes to her you know that interview i thought it was very genuine anything people can be very upset crying screaming cursing they may show no emotion at all they may be numb 
by the time interviews are happening. I'm very different. When I talk about my fiance's murder or I talk about my dad's death, I still cry. Even when I swear I'm not going to. But everyone reacts differently. I'm going to throw this directly to Mr. and Mrs. Proudfoot. Much has been made. I'll ask you. You very often look away. Don't look at who's asking you questions. Show no emotion. Much has been made of that. And I'd like to hear your response. I'm not judging one way or the other. I'd like to hear your response. So the fact of not looking at the camera all the time is because a picture of my son is sitting beside me and I'm honestly I'm looking at him. As far as the crying thing, I have been crying off and on nonstop for a month. Many people have asked me why did Miss Proudfoot not call 911 immediately? And here's your chance to answer that. Because by the time I realized my son was missing and I called my husband at that point, I was hysterical. I was at the point where I couldn't even form words anymore. And my husband is the one who remained calm enough to call them. And to be honest I'm with you, Miss Grace, the way we live outside of city limits, so you don't call 911 because you get routed to a dispatching hub who asks what's your location. And then they route you to another dispatcher to talk to, to give this story. I cut all of that out and I called straight to the sheriff's department because they have jurisdiction of where we live. So sorry that I decided to bypass a few steps and go straight to the source where they responded within 10 minutes of the phone call being made. I like that response from him. That doesn't show, you know, something that would be nefarious. And there, there's some other things that are going on. There was parts in that in, in his interview where I was like, why would he want law enforcement to look into this? Or why would he want that if, if he had committed some sort of crime? You know, there was th that happened a few times. I'd have to go back in here and to go over the specific ones. But I, I noticed that. And also in the behavioral uh, panel, they also noticed the same thing as well. I get it. There's some suspicious stuff there, but there's also some stuff that is kind of kind of lines with what you would expect. Miss Proudfoot, that evening, were you drinking? No, ma'am. Had you used any type of drug at all, even OTC over the counter? No, ma'am. And you had no argument with Sebastian that night? No, ma'am. You stated you put the dogs away into a crate before you went to bed. Is the crate located near the exit, near a door? No, ma'am. Would the dogs have barked if there had been an intruder or if Sebastian had left? The dogs don't typically bark at me and Sebastian because they're used to us. Even if we get up, we come around, they don't typically bark. Um, strangers, they do tend to bark, at least for a minute or two to get attention. Uh, but no, ma'am, they don't typically bark at Sebastian and myself or Christopher. What myself. kind of dogs are they? Morkies. Question, where is their crate located? Uh, in the area near my son's room. Over by in the kitchen. your son's, okay, hold on. Is no, it son, outside not, your son's room? No, ma'am, not, not room. Sebastian's room. Son, yeah, yes, ma'am. The sun room. And that's not near the door? No, ma'am. Not near the front door? It's near my back door, but not any of the other doors. Yes. From what I've seen the layout of the home, it is near the back door. And they would have heard someone coming in and out that back door, correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No barking. Do you have a chime or anything on your doors that would alert you to the door opening? No, ma'am. Miss Grace, could I question. jump in for something? Yes, please. And I, I want to follow up with a question yes. regarding Miss, Miss Proudfoot's polygraph. But please, Lauren, jump in. Everybody on Thank the you. panel, now is the time to ask the Proudfoots any question that may shed light on what has happened to Sebastian. We are not in a judging arena. We are in a fact-finding arena. We can then assimilate the facts and make deductions. Please jump in. Lauren Conlon is yes. joining me. You can find her at Lauren Emily Conlon. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. And now this might be for, for Brian as well. Yesterday, when the dogs hit and everybody's going crazy, YouTubers, internet, TikTokers, and we figure out it's it's not Sebastian and police are not involved. The TBI is not involved. Did you call the Proudfoots and let them know that this was not Sebastian? Did you tell them ahead of time that you were searching these areas? Um, did it, you know, did they know what you were doing or was it specifically just through Seth Rogers? Yes, yeah, so Seth Rogers is uh, Sebastian's biological father, correct? Yes. Yeah, so he, yes. he was he was there. And uh, as Ms. Grace alluded to earlier, it would not have been uh, it would not have been typical or possibly even probable that that uh, um, he could have skeletonized uh, after only a few weeks. Um, uh, so I'm not sure about the Proudfoots, but his father definitely did know. I also wanted to echo what Ms. Nancy said earlier about the uh, police. One of the reasons we got called in, there was a lot of social media personalities reaching out to us, uh, kind of complaining that they didn't feel like the police were doing enough. Uh, but really, it's it's just what uh, Ms. Nancy said, is that they're not under obligation to give daily or, or uh, every other day updates. They are doing an investigation. We have been in very close contact with TBI, and I can tell everybody with 100% certainty they are on top of it. They are not letting their foot off the gas at all on the search for Sebastian or trying to find out uh, what happened to him. The, the YouTubers and TikTokers that do live stream probably do the most. Mm -hmm. We appreciate the attention that they bring to things, but when, they, when you do a live stream, you don't wow. have any control over what gets wow. seen by potentially the entire world. Um, so we would, you know, we can't tell people what not to do. Uh, they have free speech. It's their own accounts they're using. So this is the, uh, he's called out there. He said a lot of YouTubers and, and TikTokers had contacted him to go out there and, and he sees that the police are working and they're doing their investigation. And it's not a nefarious thing. They're not giving up, you know, and, you know, I think that should be a, a big clue or an indication that, you know, us folks that are watching this from afar don't know everything. 
probably know about 10% of what's going on. That includes me. I mean, I probably know less than that because I just started getting into this. Not helpful to do live streams during searches like that. If you want to do it, do a video that you can potentially edit later um, so that we cut down on the amount of misinformation. Um, that's why social media is not necessarily a house. We, we go in and do search and rescue. Um, you have to trust the process uh, like we do. We trust law enforcement is going to have this wrapped up uh, probably very soon. Brian, yeah, I, I want to make sure that you are not encouraging citizen sleuths to stop looking because I've had many, many yeah. cases where we put out the warning and they actually spot a missing person. I mean, I only have to point to Gabby Petito, whose remains were found at his first camping way out west by a citizen who had heard about the case. So, you know, yeah, sometimes their information is wrong, but there is no way in H-E-L-L that I would ask them to stop. And I, I know that's not, not where no, you're headed. Yeah. No, no, we don't want them to stop. Uh, matter of fact, it was two citizen sleuths that found Riley String bank card uh, up by the, the bank of the Cumberland River that's in right. Nashville. So, like I said, they do provide service. My only thought suggestion was maybe not doing live stream, maybe just video, and then you can edit and mm -hmm later just a suggestion hey guys i don't want to see anything edited i want to see the whole thing no edits no airbrushing the real deal but that's just me i want to go back to katie proudfoot this is sebastian's biological mother miss proudfoot what questions were you asked during your polygraph i was asked if i knew where my son was i was asked if i hurt him um, i was asked if i had hurt someone among a few other questions and mr proudfoot you have volunteered to take a poly Yes, ma'am. If I were to set up a poly for you, would you take it? Name the place and time, ma'am. I'll be there. And you're headed back to Memphis right now. Are you in your RV right now? I am in my RV. We are not disclosing our current location just because of safety reasons due to the YouTubers, the Facebookers out there that have sent some very heinous threatening information and things of that nature. Threatening. You see, guys, these guys have been taking a lot of heat as well and a lot of threats. And I think that's probably been a reason as to why some of their actions have been in a certain way. Again, if these folks are, are innocent, and their son wandered off and there was nothing nefarious about it. I couldn't imagine the pain they're going through. And like I said, I'm not saying that they're innocent and that they didn't do anything. I honestly do not know. Uh, I'm going through this, but he just wanted to take a lie detector test. Let's see, let's, you know, put his money where his mouth is. Let's do it. To be outside of our house, all kinds of nasty things. So we're not disclosing our location at this time, unless you're law enforcement. Ms. Crawford, is that one to. of the reasons you left the home? One of them, yes, ma'am question to you guys when police came in and processed your home did they look with for instance luminol did they check what did, what did they do when they searched your home they thoroughly searched my home um, with many different things they removed um, some things for the dogs to hold the scent um, and for sebastian's dna um, i know that they used uh, thermal uh, uh, night, night, night vision thank you and um, i don't know exactly all of the tools that they use but i do know that multiple different um Searches were done on my home by many different people, detectives, uh, sheriffs, um, and a few others. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, I wouldn't swear that the forensics folks showed up or not because there were so many folks in and out of the house that okay. it was Every just, time. hi, I'm so-and-so law enforcement. I'm so-and-so law enforcement. Okay. Every time they said we need to look, well, please do. Does uh, Sebastian have a hardwood floor or a carpeted floor? In his bedroom. Carpet. Carpet. Carpeting. Carpet. Did they remove any carpeting? No, ma'am. Do you feel confident they searched his bathroom? They did. Yes, ma'am, they did. When you state that they removed items for the scent dogs, what did they take? Uh clothing, a blanket that he used like every day, um, and a few other items of his um, toiletries, like a, um, his brush. Lauren Collin joining us, investigative journalist. Uh, Lauren, again, thank you for being with us. And earlier you were hearing sound from WSMV4. I, mm -hmm. I understand you have another question. Oh, I mean, I, I guess I didn't quite get the clarity I wanted in the sense that did the Proudfoots know that this search was going on with the Cajun Navy? Um, were they being called? Were you guys being alerted about this? Did you hear from a YouTuber that they found something that the cadaver dog, or I'm sorry, the search dog started jumping or, you know, were you just kind of blind to all of this, just, you know, over no, your so, corner doing your search? No, ma'am. So here to, to, to set that record straight and help the United Cajun Navy. So somebody's got a picture out there saying that we're enjoying a dinner when we're actually out there, got flyers at a dinner table because we need to eat. My wife was on the phone with the Cajun Navy. That's how the Cajun Navy was brought in. And we talked to the president of the United Cajun Navy. He put us in touch with their team that was here locally in Nashville. Uh, then that young lady reached back out to us, gave us some more information. We gave her some more details. Then they said they would start a search, but we also had them get in direct contact with the TBI agent, as well as Sumner County's uh, Sheriff's Department. We provided all that information. They reached out to them, got some information. Uh, they pushed outside of the areas that had been searched already, uh, conducted a search. Somehow or another, they linked up with the bio father who supposedly got a tip from somewhere, whether or not it was credible or not, we don't know. Um, but it led them to searching on federal property without permission, which is where we have been informed at some point that there was allegedly a hit on something, but turned out to be nothing. And they were asked to leave the property immediately or the cops are going to be called because it was trespassing based off of a tip that the bio father received. Yeah, to Brian Trash. I don't really like the fact they call him bio father. Why not call him Seth? They do call her bio mom. 
Uh, it just kind of, I don't know, it seems kind of disrespectful to me. Uh, Paige Malone says, funny dad says they won't even talk now to him. Well, I mean, you know, we covered a case uh, here in locally to San Antonio. It was a Savannah Soto case. She was a pregnant woman who her and her boyfriend went missing the day before she was supposed to be induced with labor. And they went missing. Uh, th their bodies were found a few days later. You know, those two families started to blame each other. Kind of bad at certain points. There was uh, a, a situation that, and it was video, it, was, it occurred out there at the apartment complex where the bodies were found. You know, some of the family, just without knowing each other, had to blame someone. So I, I understand that maybe perhaps there's some, uh, maybe there's some of those feelings here, you know, some blame or, or whatnot. That, uh, that would be completely understandable and normal. I, I wouldn't necessarily take that as, as a huge red flag, so to speak, especially when we saw what, you know, some of the things that his mother has said uh, that was sent to me in, in her own post talking about giving them the death penalty and, and she admitting that she left a very lengthy emotional message on her phone and then also said that, um, you know, she's not going to stop and they are asking her to stop. I, I, I mean, like I get it, but, you know, I don't see it as something completely out of line or out of touch. I've seen families turn on each other more often than not when there's a situation where somebody's missing and there's a broken home, broken families, or you, know, you have a parent over here, a parent over there, or or even like in the situation with Savannah Soto, you know, her and her boyfriend were both missing. Come to find out they had nothing to do with anything. All right, let's finish this off. There's like two minutes left. Sure, but VP of Cajun Navy, let's clear it up. Isn't it true? This is on federal property that had been closed off. It was a hurricane site Go earlier. Ahead. It was also, yes, thank you. And it was Sorry. also near railroad tracks and some homeless people had been living there and apparently one of them had died. And we believe that is what the dogs were hitting on. Is that correct? Yeah, all of the above is correct. And we did not right. uh, gain access to the property. It had already been open when we got there. I'm not sure how right. uh, entry was gained, but but yeah, all everything above that you said was correct. Guys, the search for Sebastian goes on. If you have information, if you know or think you know anything about this beautiful, young, autistic boy, please call TBI, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, 800-T-B-I, fine, T-Tennessee, B-Bureau, I, investigative, T-B-I, fine, 1-800-T-B-I, fine, that's 800-824-3463. Please join us in the search for Sebastian and lift up your prayers. This boy will be found. And that's the end of this. And uh, how old is this kid? He's 15, He's 15 years old. You know, like I said, I don't see the red flags ish that everybody else is seeing. I, I do see some emotional stuff there going on. I, I do see some things that make me go, hmm. But, you know, I'm not seeing anything that would make me believe that these guys had anything to do with his disappearance at this point. Now, I haven't seen everything. Obviously, this is the second interview that I've seen. And I saw the first one that he had or they had with a news team. But just kind of at a glance right now. It appears that stepfather was out of town for a significant amount of time. I'm pretty sure that it's verifiable that he was. You know, he was on the phone with his wife that night, so that should have some sort of geolocation. Apparently, he was residing in a luxurious or higher end uh, RV park. I, I suppose they probably have some cameras there. If it's anything like the the one that's in Texas or in Oklahoma, can't remember which one Blue said he'd been to. Uh, but yeah, if it's anything like that, that's some high end stuff. My my father in law has an RV, and, and they go out for work sometimes out to the coast and sometimes they go out fishing and and they stay in an rv park i like it. it's pretty nice and there's surveillance there going in and out you know there's a an amenity center in, in the beginning of when you pull in that also has surveillance so i'm fairly positive if you know law enforcement are going to be able to verify where this guy was you know i listened to the yeah you know, the law enforcement press conference I, I didn't hear anything in there that made me believe that they suspected the parents or the you know the proud proud foots of any wrongdoing you know they, they said they were cooperative. You know, uh, I, I like to see some evidence, you know, saying that these guys were involved. If there's something that's out there that says, you know, a toll receipt or a toll picture or, or something of that nature that shows this guy, um, Mr. Proudfoot, coming back from um, RV park, then, yeah, th there's something there. Then he lied and, and lied about some specifics of the case, not about if he took a polygraph test or not, those type of things. I don't know why he said he took one and passed it. Like I said, I think he was just trying to draw, you know, slow down the heat, but and that shit backfired on him like crazy. And it is suspicious for him to lie. I'm not going to deny that. Anybody that lies and gets caught lying about something, especially when they have no involvement in it, is suspicious. You know, I, I don't understand why he didn't tell whoever asked him the first time, you know, did you take a lie detector test? Why he didn't say, you know, I didn't because law enforcement know where I was at and they, and I've volunteered it. And they said, because they know where I was at and they can prove where I was at. I was nowhere near the house. I don't need to take a lie detector test. Now, the one thing that kind of bugs me is that if he did, in fact, agree to take a polygraph test, why not take it up, take him up on it? He may not have been there 
But if she committed some kind of crime, he can kind of I mean, maybe disclose that in his polygraph. So I found that to be interesting. Nancy Grace claims that she's going to set one up. He said he's willing to do it. If he passes that one, she's passed one. What's the narrative there? Uh, how does that going to work? But you guys have a great night. I appreciate you all uh, tuning in. Please hit that like and subscribe button and ring that notification bell. I'll be back on probably tomorrow. And again, if you want to catch that members live only show that we did yesterday, you can do it in two ways. You can become a member. It's always there. Or you can check it out on Spotify or Apple Podcasts tomorrow, probably around noonish. So that being said, I'm out of here, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace.